Thomas Show. Sirius 108 and XM 139. This is the Jay Thomas Show. The interesting, the odd, and the bizarre people behind the, uh, uh interesting. The odd and bizarre stories. Jay gets in it, stirs it up, and spits it out. He's a professional. It's all here on the Jay Thomas Show with Rodney Lee Conover, Julie, Madison, Kevin Meany, Garrett, and Christina, and Ira the Weatherman. This is the Jay Thomas Show. Ah, uh, the great Rodney Lee Conover is... In our studios uh, uh, in California and, um, of course, um, back in New York, you know that Christina and Garrett are there. And we've moved things around a Hello. little bit. Uh, Christina is not just a... For breakfast anymore. <laughs> <laughs> not just a pretty face. She is a woman who is trying, who is striving. She, she gave up her marriage for radio. That's right. She didn't. She's striving uh, to move Garrett forward. Garrett and I gave up our future marriages. Radio. How's that? And this is a... Um, I just gave up going into radio. <laughs> there you go. Just gave up. Right. End right there. I guess whatever I have to say isn't that important. It's not so much important. No, I want to hear it. It was about I me. know, of course. Go it's ahead. about you. Yes, thank you. You know what? What's wrong with Garrett and Rodney Heckling? You can tell... <laughs> Who's been a member of this team for a while? It's about me. Everyone be quiet. <laughs> <laughs> it's about me. Uh, Christina is um, uh, executive producing the show today. That's and fancy. So, and when you call 888-4102-102, uh, Garrett uh, will be the uh, telephone boy. Get out of here. Uh, the communications director, as we like to call it. Now, uh, well, what is it that she does? Well, uh, the sound effects and like this music that's playing too long in the background. Um <laughs> She's responsible for it, and then she has to figure out when to go to these uh, breaks that we have, and there are specific times, and I don't go to them at the specific specific time, so she has to signal me. She steers the ship. Right. Do you Have you showed her the button where she can talk to me uh, in my ear and no one can hear it, Garrett? Yes. Okay. Christina, press that button now. And say something to Rodney and I. Say something really rude. That no one else can hear. Yeah, something really rude. <laughs> oh. Now, Garrett, <laughs> wait a second. Wait a second. Hold on here. You mean no oh. one could hear that just now? Hear what? <laughs> oh, Garrett didn't hear it? Wow. That's wow. unbelievable. So that's, that's a secret button. So during the show... You know, I'll be talking or whatever, and we're communicating with, you know, a couple of uh, uh, computer. <laughs> and then she can say stuff in my ear. Now, if I'm in the middle of saying something. Oh, I want to take my pants down. And she decides to start, <laughs> which Garrett doesn't do. But if she decides to to, to just speak to me. <laughs> oh, oh, that hurt. Like she's doing right now. <laughs> that, is, that is not right. All right. Don't do that hey, during the show. There's two men in this room. Come okay. On. All right. Now, so she's back there. Uh, tonight's really big uh, for me. You know, you hate to be a homer, but... Um, a what? A homer. Oh. But I'm going to be one. Uh, the uh, Saints play the Minnesota Vikings. Wow. What a great game, huh? I did not realize Man. that the Super Bowl champion opens the season every year, but that's... Uh, that's what they're doing, and it's a good idea, and I'm on all for it. Well, it's interesting because uh, it's not just the Super Bowl champion; it's the guys they knocked out, right? Well, it's the team that should have won yeah. the NFC Championship. I will say that yeah. right now, one slide away, and it's a team that would have gotten the same Baltimore—I mean, uh, uh, yeah, Baltimore Colts team—that for whatever reason. Um, I don't know. You think Garrett Minnesota could have beaten um, the Baltimore Colts? The Baltimore Colts? What am I saying? Indiana. I'm sorry. Yeah. Indianapolis, Indianapolis Colts. I'm sorry. When the Super Bowl <laughs> had had the Saints uh, advanced last year? No, had the Saints not I mean, advanced? Had the Vikings. Advanced. I'm so nervous. I don't know what the team. Yeah. All right, Christina. Garrett, could hold they have on one second. The Baltimore Colts. Hold on, with Christina. Joe stop <laughs> saying that shit in my headset. <laughs> okay. Please, okay. It I'm was sorry. funny in the first. I'm sorry. I, got a I know. I you got do. a boner. I take you it got too me far. saying Baltimore Colts and stuff. Stop it. Ball tomorrow. You know what? It was funny for like a couple of minutes, and it'll be funny. It'll be good after the show. But now and later, Uncle Jay can't progress. I'm sorry, Uncle Jay. Jesus. Although, 
That's kind of creepy, Uncle Jay. Right mean, after Uncle Daddy Jay. It, it isn't creepy. Right after she said it is, it she isn't said. creepy. Uh, so do you think that Minnesota uh, would have won the Super Bowl against the Indianapolis Colts? I don't see why not, why they wouldn't. Yeah, I think they would have also. They could uh, They could easily beat the Saints. They sure could. You're exactly right. Their defense was unbelievable. Five yeah. turnovers they had, and they were still in it until the end. That's right. That's exactly and right. And that stupid pass instead of oh. fighting for the, for the win. Well, he says that his ankle was hurt so badly. I don't give a goddamn. You kicked the field goal, you're in the Super Bowl. Is that what it was? All he had to do was slide. He was already had a first down. No, they were winning at that time. They were winning, so it would have run the clock out or something. No, crazy. no, no, no. They would have kicked the field goal. Is that it? Within field goal range, and oh, then yeah. they would have, you know, been been out of range for the Saints. So, so anyway, now let's go to Minnesota. Now, Garrett, would they have beaten the '67 Colts with uh, <laughs> or Jets with Joe Namath? '69, <laughs> only if he was throwing to Johnny Unitas. Okay, all right. Um, <laughs> let's let's go to Sean of Minnesota. Sean, uh, before we go another step further, um, Tom Brady was in a car accident this morning. And apparently, how, how did how did the girl do? She hit her. She head? did fine. Um, <laughs> he was in his uh, fire engine red, I think you know whatever supercar he's got. A guy in a van ran a red light, and Tom Brady t boned him, t boned him, and um, the guy had to be taken out of his van. Jaws of life. Is that considered a full sack, or does he get half for that? No, actually, the guy. Um, he. Uh, it's like Brady ran over the guy. Hmm. Like, because the guy was Jaws alive, Jaws alive, and Brady's fine, and he'll play this weekend. Um, uh, Sean of Minnesota. Uh, the line is um, line one, Christina. Line one. Uh, the the line is uh, it's one. No, it's five or six. No, no, line one. No, no, six. it's five. The line is six tonight. So now, Ooh. Saints. Saints are six at home. Um. I, now, Sean, this this uh, um, Saints and the over, this Brett Favre, uh, that ankle's got screws in it and stuff. Um, you know anything about what's going on there with him? And it's been there two weeks. You know what's that? wild about those screws in his, his ankle? <laughs> what? They're from the sixties. <laughs> Why do you keep saying that? Because I get the teams wrong. No, no, no. The screws are so old. You see, Brett Favre's old. No, these are the new screws from a month ago. Two oh, months ago. I these they're... are brand new screws. They're plastic. I have them in my knees. Uh, yes, go ahead, Sean. How do you feel about tonight's game from Minnesota? I, I'm i going to predict minimum of nine points for the Saints. A win of nine points. Yep, a win of nine points for the Saints. Because the, the, the team who's won the Super Bowl, when they come back for their first game, they've won 10 of the last 12 years. So those you kind of got to go by that a little bit. So you're one of those guys... That even though they're different players, you somehow buy into this different guys from 10, 12 years ago, and yet somehow, I don't, I don't get, well, I mean, I'm a, a betting man, I don't get There's something to that, because a suit, Sean, correct me if I'm wrong, but a Super Bowl team will more often than not the following year improve their team, because people want to go yep. play for the Super Bowl. Yes, they will. Yep. But everyone's that, saying the Saints don't have much of a chance of repeating. Well, that might be true. I'm not talking about. I'm talking about this game. Yeah, first this game. game yeah. Wow, God, I'm I'm afraid to bet the Saints tonight because really? that. Oh, I do am. It. Do it. Okay, oh, I'll bet them. Yeah. And you know they looked great in preseason, but now what does Brett Favre look like? How how is he doing? He did. I only saw him in four or five plays, and it was like nothing to look at. So I don't. I don't well, I even I'm going to tell you it. something here. I'm going to tell you something you probably already know. Our offensive line is shit. Uh oh. It's shit. So if he's going to be handing the ball off, hoping to hell Peterson doesn't fumble, or he's going to are you are you play. setting me up? Hold it! Are you setting me up? No, I'm not. I, I can because I've I've, I've talked to you before. We've known you for years, and to be honest, you're normally an asshole. I could give a shit less if you bet or not. I'm I'm just going liar, 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 uh, okay. asshole, uh, Minnesota liar, thief, okay. asshole. That's what you are. Uh, don't bet you that. think I'm going to fall for this shit, you Viking? Uh, your bookie's on the line. Well, tell him to hold on. Uh, Christina, talk to him and do that stuff to him that you do. All right. So, all right. So, you, you're, are you going to uh, uh, go to a party tonight to watch the game? Nah, I'll probably just watch it with my uh, kid tonight. He's 
He's got Tate, or not, uh, he's got Brees in his fantasy league, so. Yeah, we don't have Brees, but I have Marcus Colston. Uh, by the way, uh, Garrett, you're my assistant coach. We're ready tonight for the big, for the beginning. Our lineup is in. Lineup is in, and we're ready to go for the big And the you big game. Uh, picked the games on Sirius.com slash pigskin. Yes, I did. And okay, let me to... ask you this, Jay. Jay, let me ask you With this. With your five oh, best bets, too. <laughs> <laughs> yes, I did. Yes, I did. Yes, go ahead, Jay, Sean. Mm-hmm. How, how many touchdowns will Drew Brees throw? Here's a question I have for you. What effect will it have that um, Reggie Bush... <laughs> <laughs> was in Kim Kardashian's bush. What? What? This thing Would that with be the considered the red zone. The thing with the Heisman <laughs> Trophy. Um, they want him to give it back. They say that he his parents were given his parents now the actual trophy or just the title of it. The trophy. The so thing. I lost it. Oh, you can't find it. <laughs> So okay, lot. you're you you're Reggie Bush, and I'm the I'm the people at the New York Athletic Club. Hey there. Okay, <laughs> <laughs> that's what Reggie Bush sounds like. Hello, uh, I'm from the uh, New York Athletic Club. Hello Are you Reggie Bush? Yes. All right. Um, we would like. Yes, I am. We would like. You've done something. We're not yes, sure. I have. We're not sure what it is. Mm-hmm. But we, uh, your parents, apparently, you bribed my daddy. No, I didn't do anything. I gave you an incredible... You bribed my daddy. No, no. I gave... My daddy don't have a pot to piss in, and you threw $200,000 at him. I didn't do anything to your father. I gave you... No, I was thinking. ...the coveted Heisman Trophy yes, you did. Award. Garrett, would you please... What does that look like, by the way? It's a... What do you mean, what does it look like? You I'm have, just saying. You have one in your house. Oh, it's not in my house. You're telling me that you don't know where the Heisman Trophy is. I don't think you ever delivered it. You don't Take think you we up. delivered the Heisman? You got a signed receipt? I, I'll have to look. I'll have to. Look, I'll have to look up in my paperwork here. I, I, Garrett, would you please find the the what you get the Heisman for? It's not just for being a good player. Okay, I, I, I want to read that to to Reggie Bush here because I believe that he. <laughs> by the way, we will rejoin the uh, Heisman executive and Reggie Bush in a, in a few moments. In progress. Uh, Sean, thank you very much. You bet. Uh, let's go to Brian of New Orleans. Uh, Brian, um, uh, a buddy of mine called. He's got, he wanted two other tickets. He had six. I said, don't go to the Superdome. Scalp the tickets you've got and you and your seven, you know, eight friends go to a bar in Bourbon Street and watch the game there, right? I mean, I mean, there's no complaints with that. Yeah, I mean, that's what I'm saying. I mean, I'm on my way down there right now. I mean, come on. New Orleans, I mean, you, you got to go to the game. I mean, what idiots nah. wouldn't? I mean, it's not about scalping tickets. I mean, it's New Orleans. I mean, we live here. I mean, if with that type of attitude, I'd be in Orlando right now that's with a Mai Tai instead of New Orleans. Do you know what? You know, with where, the money that you make from scalping, fly to Florida. Yeah. And get a Mai Tai. So you think come it's on. a big deal to be in the the stadium itself? Oh, yeah, it's just an experience, you know? It's just New Orleans. Cause you end like, up just watching that city? big jumbotron? Yeah, that's exactly right. You watch it on the t- <laughs> TV and all you that? You watch it on the TV but anyway. It's about experience, you know? I mean, you New Orleans, we, we have it. Yeah. We're so much different than any other city because those big markets, they don't get to see their players. I mean, David Patton used to play for the Patriots. He played for the Saints. We met him in a sushi bar, and he sat there and talked to us for two hours. And let me try on a Super Bowl ring. I mean, you don't get that. Wait a minute. He let you put. He let you you didn't run. The Super Bowl ring on which finger did it fit on you? Your thumb or on a regular Uh, finger? On your leg? (laughs) My uh, my, my, my big toe on my foot. It was pretty big. Now, um, tonight, you know, uh, you just heard the guy from Minnesota. He thinks that they're going to get killed. Um, are you betting the game? Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. You got to take, I mean, the Superdome, I mean, come on, man. That's, that's a, that's the 12th man right there. Now, but, I mean, do you think Reggie Bush ought to give the Heisman Trophy back? Well, I mean, he did deserve it, but guess what, man? You messed up. Well, you know what? They all do that, Jay, to be honest. In the well, wait, exactly what did he do? What what felony? What is it a felony? Is it a, What the hell did oh, I do? Not, yes. not yet. We'll be back to Reggie Bush in a minute. What is there a felony? What is the what did he do? What did what caused all this? It's not he did, it's not criminal charges. What right. happened is the NCAA sets up sanctions. 
that says players cannot accept. The main problem with the NCAA is you get all these kids in the boosters for the team. They do they grease their palms a little bit, give them money, give them jobs at a uh, car dealership, washing cars, paying them uh, $1,200 a week. I mean, it happens in the NCAA, but it's all about if you're stupid enough to get caught. Well, you know, I mean, Reggie Bush's mom and dad supposedly took hundreds of thousands of dollars from yeah, one or two man. guys, but then they didn't pick those guys to be the agent, and those guys turned them in. That's what I heard. Yeah. I mean, the, right. I think the biggest problem right now is they're having with the agents. I mean, look at the, I think it's North Carolina's football team. They just played LSU. I think 13 of their players were out because the agents are sending them to Miami Beach and these hotel rooms and everything because they're trying to get, get to them early instead of at the uh, combine, which they should be doing. Well, one kid in Georgia, he sold his jersey for a thousand dollars to an agent. Yeah, my my nephew, green. my yeah. nephew. Got a agent. I mean, you got to think though, Jay. I mean, hmm? it's a business at the end of the day. Absolutely. You know? Hey, by money. the way, is SC going to give back the millions of dollars it made from the Reggie Bush jerseys and memorabilia? Oh. Of, no. of course not. You think they would? No. No. I mean, but I, I love Pete Carroll leaving and saying he didn't know anything about it. You're the head coach of a football team. How can you not know? Liar. It's a liar. I mean, come on. Yeah. Pete Kyle's getting, uh, getting blowjobs from the ugly uh, SC cheerleaders on the bleachers at the end of the oh day. Oh, my I God. Mean, now, now that's rumor. It's gotten ugly. It's gotten ugly. Alleged. Alleged. Hey, Brian, alleged, thank you. Who dat? Who dat, Brian? Thank you. Y'all have a wonderful uh, afternoon, guys. Thank you. Who dat? My yep. nephew got a mink rug. <laughs> In uh, <laughs> kindergarten, his four square team from some agent. <laughs> okay, he let, took it. He didn't know any better. Let's go over the Heisman uh, people here. The first guy, Jay Burwanger. Mm. He was a Chicago Bear halfback. You got that right. Um, you know how many points he scored when he won the Heisman? Um, I would say four hundred and eight. Hold on a minute. Let me just tell you what. I'll just tell you what, what Reggie in 2005, Reggie, his points were, oh, are these points voting points, Garrett? Yeah, voting oh, points. oh, 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 the, okay. I thought it was with the, cause it was only 84 and Reggie was 2,500. <laughs> Jay Burwanger, just because he has the name Wang Wanger. in his name. Yeah. Get out, get out of here. First of get, all, get how, can trophy you even back. Be, how can you even be eligible if you have Wang in your name? You can't. Larry Kelly and Clint Frank from Yale. There's two people? Two guys back to back years well, from right. Yale. Oh. Uh, no. Um, no. Give it back. Why? They're from Yale. Oh, well, yeah, you're right. Give it back. Tom Harmon of Michigan in 1940. He pl went on to play Bozo for like. No, that was. 50 <laughs> Give it back, clown. <laughs> That's Larry Harmon. Whatever. His son is, um, What's that? What's his uh, married to Pam Darber? What's his name? Mark. Mark Harmon. Because his son sucks as an actor. Take that trophy away. Take it away. Take it away. Give it back. 1942, mm -hmm. Frank Sinkwich. That's, uh, That's bad too. Mob, mob ties. If your name is Sink. The next year, Angelo Bertelli. Well, I was one year early. <laughs> From Notre Dame. Yes. All right. Um, Let's see who I could take take it away from. Um, hmm. 1954, Alan Amici. Oh, you know what he did? I don't know what he did. Oh, just He just really hammed it up in all those He movies. was a bad actor. Yeah. Now, I tell you who was a bad guy, was caught gambling when he mm. played pro ball. Paul Horning won it. In 1956. We spent the first half of this show talking about gambling on sports. That's exactly right. So I say he keeps it. Uh, Paul Horning, by the way, played on a Notre Dame team that I think won one game. Do you know that Paul Horning mm -hmm. uh, retired about 10 years too early? No, he was really hurt. He said it was back was hurt. Yeah, it was really No one hurt. believed it. 1957, John David Crow. John David Crow. Crow. Three names, bad. He had... Um, bad. Oh, yeah, three names. It was serious. Bad John David Crow. Now, you know who went to jail? After he got his, and this is from Louisiana. Yale, went to Yale? No, Billy Cannon of LSU. He went to jail for, he became a dentist or something, but he went to jail for something, got in real trouble, Billy Cannon. Um, Fill and, for filling the wrong case. I don't know what it was, but they didn't take it away from him. Why? 
O.J. Simpson, 1968. Well, they tried to take it away from him, uh, but he shot the guy. That up. <laughs> Stabbed him? You can't. You can't stab a dude for trying to get the Garrett, would you go back and get O.J. Simpson's trophy? Definitely not. You, you wouldn't? No, it had nothing to do with his play on the field, what he did. So you think Reggie Bush... He was known as a cutting and slashing back. <laughs> you, you think that Reggie Bush ought to keep his uh, trophy? He still was the most outstanding player in college that year. But that you get the Heisman for more than being a, a good player, don't you? That's what I want you to There's find. There's morals. Did you find something there in there, Garrett? It, it just you? says the most outstanding player. That's it? That's all it says? Yeah. And th there's other awards for the best player, but it says the most outstanding, where his team may have, you know, tried to get the national title or... So it doesn't things. say on and off the field or no. whether his parents take money from an agent or Did anything. you kill your wife and her boyfriend? <laughs> right. Do you have your name? Wang is in your name? Is anything in there? What, Are you a serial about? killer? In 1992, Gino Toretta won the Heisman Trophy. He should give it back because as soon as he left college, and I, I saw him play preseason, and he tried to play a couple of years for Miami. He was an embarrassment. He couldn't throw the ball over the line of scrimmage. He couldn't get it from where he was standing to anybody anywhere. Maybe was, he didn't want to play. Well, I guess not. I don't know. You she, know how some guys are like And he's a bad announcer. Rashan Salam, 1994. Now, I'm sorry. There, I think that says it all. You know what? We should burn his Heisman. That's right. All of them. <laughs> Rashan Salam. Who else? Um, Isn't he Sammy White now? No. <laughs> they don't do it that way. You. Oh, it doesn't go the other it way. It doesn't go that way. It goes the other way. Um, <laughs> and then there's Reggie Bush in 2005. Absolutely, they should not. Um, you know, Mark Ingram's dad is in jail for, I don't know what for, drugs or whatever. And they gave him the uh, Heisman Trophy last You're year. You're not responsible for your father's behavior. Okay. Wow. That's exactly right. That's why Reggie Bush shouldn't. Gary, did, uh, Gary, Garrett, did Reggie, stop it, Christina. Um, Garrett, did Reggie Bush take any money? Have they proven he took any money? Uh, I don't know if they proven it, but it's assumed. I would say that. And when you assume, Garrett, what do you do? You make, make an, an ass, ass out of, of everyone. No, you, you and, and me. Hmm. Let's go I to wish ben it was of, an easy way to remember that. Let's go to well. There is you put a, a s s. Uh, a slash. He was uh, slamming you, Jay. A U, another slash. By the way, I just read today, 13,227 junior high coaches have used that on a chalkboard in a in a locker room. Every coach ever had. You'd think they'd be drawing up plays and stuff. Stupid. Uh, let's go to Ben of New Orleans. Hi, Ben. It's Jay Thomas. What did Billy Cannon uh, go to jail for? What? What? What Shooting was to do to the Cannon? No, no. He was the great, great uh, AFL player. But before that, LSU. What did he go to jail for, Ben? Hey guys, he he was counterfeiting money. And if I if I remember correctly, he just recently got out of jail for that. Let Let's say now that it's alleged. How until, do you make his bail? And, <laughs> until we find uh, out, he was counting. Now, did they let him keep his Heisman? I, he gave it to a place called TJ Ribs down in Baton Rouge. That place also has uh, Shaquille O'Neal's old shoes, so they got a nice little trophy rack. He gave his Heisman to a rib place. Uh, yep. He also gave him about seventeen thousand dollars in twenty-five dollar bills. Wait a minute. Right. <laughs> Wait a second. The most coveted. Award you can get in football, and you go into what is it? TJ's ribs. TJ, yeah. Like you know what he also. Games. You know what he also gave TJ's ribs. What his Stanley Cup. So they think maybe there's some more counterfeiting. He, he didn't. He had his own Stanley no, Cup. He they could figure it out. Uh, yeah. All right. Thank you very much. Jesus. Hey, uh, Saints thirty-eight. Vikings twenty-four. Who that? Thirty-eight twenty-four. Who that? Thank you very much. Now, if much. you go to TJ's yeah. and you take a look at that, it. it Heisman is spelled with two S's on that particular trophy. Now, I always heard that um, Joe... Th 
Theisman's real name is Thiesman. And because they wanted him to try and win the Heisman Trophy, they started calling him Theisman because it rhymed with Heisman. You, I always you know, heard You that. know what he wanted to be called when he got to Washington Redskins? What? Ruper Bowl. Hi. <laughs> Joe Ruper Bowl. so stupid to... <laughs> Rupert Bowl. Yeah. All right. Let's go. Sounds like Super Bowl. <laughs> Let's go back to our. You just got that? Yeah. Let's go back. Good Lord. Let's go back to to our theater of the mind. I am the uh, representative from the Heisman's, and uh, your name is sir. I'll be Mr. Bush. You're Reggie Bush. You. You're Reggie Bush. Reggie to my friends. Did you ever get behind that? Um, you know, this is this is off the subject. Yeah, Mr. Bush. Yeah. Did you ever get behind that Kim Kardashian? Ever, I did. You did that. I did. I mm-hmm. did. Uh, the only the only mm-hmm. back I couldn't get around was her. <laughs> <laughs> I had to go wide. <laughs> the only back. Yeah, I went out of bounds getting around there. <laughs> you know what I mean? Her ass was so big. That's you... how big it was. <laughs> Did her mother do the timeout thing? When there there went, was a flag thrown on the play. I know that. Now, where is, we'd like the Heisman back. Oh, that's going to be a problem. Well, you we you gave, want it back. Yeah, you we gave it to you in a big ceremony. My mama used to say Indian giver. Well, that's true. But at this point, you have, we think you've done something, and we want the trophy. Well, why don't you just think you got it back? <laughs> <laughs> Now, wait a minute. You think I did something. <laughs> you allege that you got that trophy. Back. You allegedly did something. Yes, that's true. We would like the, the Heisman Trophy back. Uh, I think that mm-hmm. it is in or, the shed. I have to look. Well, we'll send somebody wherever you would tell us. We'll gladly go get it. Okay. Check my daddy's house. He's got pretty much everything now. <laughs> <laughs> All right. You've been listening to a reenactment of the Heisman Committee, discussing this with Reggie Bush. Let's go now to Brett Favre. Uh, Brett, big game tonight in New Orleans. Um, how's yeah, the ankle? Uh, hey, Roach. How are you doing there, Roach? Uh, get Thank ready you. for the big game. This <laughs> I'm ready for it. Now, there. many people don't know this, but, of yeah. course, Roach was my nickname when I was uh, uh, playing football. And, hey, of course... Uh, Roach, hold on a quick second. Is that yeah. the clear or the cream? Uh, slap that right on there. All right, thank you. Go ahead. What bro. are you putting? What are you putting? Cream? He's uh, alluding to steroids. There. Wait a second. You're putting some sort of uh, cream on yourself? Oh no, I'm talking about my coffee. Don't worry about it. You know, I'm having a little job before. Hey, you know what happened to me this morning? What? I ran over my wife with a tractor, so I should just have played pretty good tonight. <laughs> Seems like every time a family member dies, I have a pretty good game. You know? Boy, you have lost them. You've had the brother-in-law died, the uncle died, your dad yeah. dropped dead, and now your mother, your your wife has run over somebody, or somebody's run over her. No, I ran her over with the tractor. You ran her over. All right. Well, good yeah. luck tonight. Well, what think, are your plans? Well, Do you have any special is, uh, plays? I yeah. decided. I decided this is my last year. I'm going to have Ray Lewis systematically kill every member of my family. <laughs> so I should just keep going and going and going. I had a pretty good year this year. You know. You must listen to this show quite often because you have quoted the death of people in your family and the fact that I truly believe that Ray Lewis is as much of a murderer as O.J. Simpson is. You must listen to this show. No, that's why I hired him, because I know it's true, allegedly. Yeah. All right. Brett Favre, <laughs> thank right, you very man. much. Thank Good you. luck. Yeah, we'll see you. Thank bye. you. Well, I think we've squeezed as much uh, out of that uh, comedy juice as we can. Uh, stay where you are. Christina is at the controls, and we'll be right back. 888-4102-102. Uh, By the way... Uh, when you listen to the NFL on the Sirius NFL channels, what's really great is you can hear, uh, if you're a Minnesota fan, you hear the Minnesota announcers on one channel. If, you hear the, if you're a Saints fan, you hear the Saints um, on the other channel. Or you can hear the national feed. Is that correct, Garrett? They also have the national. I think national. They, they just have, uh, oh, they the might two. have all three for, like, tonight's game. Yeah, because, right, yeah. something like that. But during the Sundays, it's just... You know, eat both sides. I love listening to, you know, the team you like, and something great happens, you know. And then, oh, my God, God, fumble, fumble. And then you turn to the other team and you go, ah, oh, you dropped the ball. You know. What, the <laughs> thing is, in, like in New York, I feel like people aren't homers as much. In, in other cities, like the announcers are blatantly rooting for the team. I kind of like that oh. better. 
Like when the one the color guy's going run, run! Oh my God, score! You know when he's all excited. What? Do that again, please. Run, run! Your girlfriend isn't listening, is she? <laughs> no. <laughs> so, you know, you're not only they homers, but when you listen, if you're in another town, and you're, and let's say I'm in Cincinnati for the oh. weekend, and they're playing against the Saints, well, of course, <laughs> they say the most horrible <laughs> shit they could say, and how bad this, what the bad decision was, and the refs, no, you know. Mm. Oh yeah, you're right. I, I guess in New York and perhaps L.A. They they think the world is listening to them. That's why. And that's that's the only point. thing I can think. Yeah. Well, you know, Mad Dog isn't he a, a huge homer uh, for the? Is it the Mets or something? And, and people make fun of him for that. He's a San Francisco Giants fan. What? Yeah, that's his big team. He lives in New York City and he talks like this. And he's a new is a San because his dad liked the New York Giants or something. One of those kind of deals. I, he probably did too. I think he's old enough to have been here. No, I um, no. The Giants left forties. Yeah, I, not but we weren't. I don't think we were. I don't think he was born when the Giants left town. He likes the the Red Stockings too. The Cincinnati team. I don't know. Um. Did you know that Eddie Murphy had a baby by one of the Spice Girls? I did. Wasn't it Posh? No, Mel B. Oh, Mel B. You know what, Christina? Why are That's they toast? Why are they famous? I have no idea. What the Spice Girls? Yeah. Why are they? Well, so... they had the gigantic hit records at one time. If you want to be but, my but, lover, but yeah, why are they still in? Take it, Garrett. Well. Boy George had they hits. They should still be famous. Yes, and they're well, but Posh Spice legacy, has kept herself, you know, yeah, in the, in the news by marrying uh, the soccer player, right? And Mel B, Beckham, with, yeah. yeah, and Mel B with Eddie Murphy. Mel B. Well, he deal. accused her of of coercing him. This is when they had the child <laughs> into putting his penis inside of her, thinking that she was taking birth control, and and plopping this kid out, and then I guess proved. Uh, that the child was hers, I and then his too. I didn't realize this. Now Eddie Murphy, very quietly, I love reading these. Uh, I love these OK magazines. Quietly in the press, <laughs> he is quietly meeting with the child. Well, good. And you know the first thing you said. What? Get the fuck out of it. <laughs> you know what made the child want to meet him? Um, big ass credit card. No. Oh, we're going me. around the horn? No. Oh, Let's go around the horn. Oh, I know what it Let's is. See. All right. I I'll just want to hit left. the button. I go to your left. <laughs> Christina, why do you think the three-year-old wants to meet Eddie Murphy, her daddy? Because he stood in front of her and was like, I got some ice cream. You want to have some. I got some ice cream. Would you do that in my headphones? <laughs> uh, Garrett, what do you think it is? Because he thought he was Hercules, Hercules. <laughs> no. What is it? What is it, Rod? You're, you're all wrong. He, he he stood in front of her and said, My girl wants to potty all the time. Potty all oh, the time. Oh, that's terrible. Potty yeah, all the time. time. No, because no, of... she saw him in a movie, of Shrek. course. It was be yeah. it's because of Shrek. And her favorite... Now, listen to this. Thank she, God that uh, Murphy didn't... Or the other Murphy didn't show up. She's three years old, right? And so she's watching the movie, and she's in love with the jackass, right? The donkey. And that's her favorite character. And Mel B, Spice Mel B, you know. That's your daddy. That's your daddy. Your daddy's an ass. Can you imagine? Actually, that? she didn't even know she was watching Shrek. She just yelled, your daddy's an ass. Well, then, when, um, you know, she met Eddie Murphy. <laughs> Remember how do you meet? How, how does a three year old meet people? Well, the sick thing was, and they're going to go to their little hand. They're going to go to therapy over this. The voice of the donkey made the, her cry. Right? No, was coming out of Harry her, Murphy, yeah. out of this man's mouth. So the little. So now they're going to have to go to therapy. Why? Well, she literally thought the jackass was her daddy, and she was really excited. Uh huh. But then the mother tried to explain that a cartoon isn't real. Three-year-old can't figure that out. So here comes Eddie Murphy talking like the jackass. You know who they should actually send her to for who? therapy? Who? 
The voice of Shrek. They should send over to what's his name? Well, Mike Michael. Myers. I'm Michael just, Myers. Yeah. Yeah. Now, now, uh, what's the what's the donkey's name? What's the jackass's name? Donkey. I don't, donkey. That's all they call him is yeah. donkey. Donkey. Yeah. That's donkey. my impression of Shrek. <laughs> yeah. Good. All right. All right. <laughs> as good as mine. Uh, by the way, Monday night, uh, the reason why, uh, Christina is working, um, today is Garrett is gonna go to the opening game of the Jets against the Ravens on Monday night. And so what you'll be, you're gonna go there like at six o'clock or something? Are you to tailgating? Sit? No, no, like three o'clock. Are you tailgating? Yeah. What are you making? We don't know yet. Mm-hmm. You mean, you sit in the parking lot with the hot dogs and all that shit? Kielbasa. Better than hot, hot dogs. dogs. Yeah, what's Bullshit. a hot dog? No. What do you mean? What you, do you mean? You get crazy with yeah, it. Yeah, we cooked Cold real, pork. We fried a turkey one time. You fried a turkey? <laughs> At the game, yeah. What was his No, name? you did <laughs> not yes, you fry do. a turkey. Yeah, yes. you get those turkey People fried. set up hot chairs and you sit there all day I wouldn't do it in a parking long. lot. Of we have party. tables and chairs and We alcohol. set up beer pong tables yeah. and tents. Now, I tailgate all the time, and I never bring anything. Nothing. Tell me. What do you mooch off everybody? I walk down the thing. Someone goes, hey, Hey. there's a guy from Cheers. Here's a kielbasa. (laughs) I go, hey, how you doing? You want a fried turkey? (laughs) How you doing? They go, hey, you want a beer? You want a chicken leg? Yeah. I eat all the way into the stadium. (laughs) And they go, sometimes they go, hey, it's it's a guy from Laverne and Shirley. Hey, how you doing? It's a lawyer. (laughs) Sure, I'll have a hammer. I was listening to a talk show host last night, a Jerry Doyle, and um, it was one of these deals where he starts screaming at the top of the show, um, 450,000 people every year die of smoking. So his, his whole, the whole show, the whole, I mean, I tuned in and out, you know, listening in the, in the car for a while, and I think, and, and it was like, what do you, should, should we ban smoking? And he's a right wing guy. So what he was saying was they ban lawn darts and they ban, you know, trans fats and everything else, but they don't ban smoking. And he said he's a smoker. In the middle of this thing, he starts talking about right in the middle. what a big actor he is, Jerry Doyle. Do you know who he, he's an announcer? And he talked about working with Martin Sheen and, and what a left wing guy he was and blah, blah, blah. And he kept saying that when he was a big TV star, and I never heard of Jerry. I, I knew he was an announcer. Do you know what show Jerry Doyle was on? No, what was it? Babylon 5. Never you ever it. heard of him, Garrett? Jerry Doyle? No. I've never watched that show either. Did he play one of the uh, one of the Captain Kirks? He was on there for five years, apparently. Have you ever seen Babylon 5, uh, Garrett? Never. No, I haven't I- either. Well, he was, now I'm, I'm listening thinking, God, I hope I don't sound like this guy. Because you would have thought he was in, you know, like. Cheers. Star Trek or, or I, he didn't say what the show was. So what, I wasn't well, Babylon 5 a big ass show though? I guess it was. It was on one of the cable channels and I went online when I, when I, you know, got back to the computer and, and, and he's there, but he never worked again. He did Babylon. Didn't have to. I wonder if in five he might have made enough money. Five years, it's still running. He married an actress from the show. Hundred and ten episodes. Wow. Yeah, once you get to a hundred, that's a lot. Yeah. And he was the he, lead. It says. Yeah. So he had a piece of it. Well, he married. He doesn't have a piece anymore. He's got half. Piece. He married an actress in the show. Do you see the cast? Andrea Thompson. Do you see her name or Andrea somebody or other? Hmm. She wasn't a star of the show. She was down the... One of the red shirts? Yep. She was married to him from episode 50 to episode 110. Ouch. Ouch, (laughs) mommy. Yeah. And then... That would be known as the syndication episode. Episode 111 was divorce court. She played a... And I'm reading this... What? She played a telepath. So she knew what was going to happen. Yes. She married him for the last... They were on the show together for a few years. Mm-hmm. She married him for the last two years. Yeah. Do you think what, that was conniving of her? I do. What planet? I don't know what where Babylon Five is. I have I have no, I have no idea where Babylon Five is. It's a unknown unknown galaxy. Hold on there. a second. Mm-hmm. Hold on a second. Hold on. Mm-hmm. Captain's log. No, it isn't. That. Hold on. Mm-hmm. Captain's log. Mm-hmm. <clears throat> okay, thanks. 
<laughs> hey, Garrett, <laughs> I wish you could transport yourself here and I could be transported to where you are right now. Because I had to watch Rodney's face turn red and he pretended a captain's log came out of it. Right. Now, Christina, when something dramatic like this happens, uh-huh. I need a break. Okay. <laughs> We have um, a guest, of course. I know who all the guests are, but um, they own a place called Crash Space. I'm pretty sure that what the people that I was inviting on, if you need to build something kind of uh, uh, special for a, a piece of machinery, you would tell them what you needed. I think they build it in the computer, and then it can be manufactured. I'm pretty sure that's... That's what I thought I was inviting on. But, Garrett, these guys, what the guys we have coming on, they are hackers, programmers, builders, and artists who like to break things and then see what new things they can build with the pieces. And it's like kind of a nerd club. Is that it? I believe so. But they make kind of cool, at least looking things. Like I saw one where they take the the head of a toothbrush, and they made it into a robot that would complete a maze. They took the head of an electric toothbrush? No, a regular toothbrush. And somehow they got it, they attached some motor to it or something, and they made it run a maze. Well, well, wait a minute now. You could put the head of anything. I mean, it's the motor that you make that would be interesting to me. I mean, the what's the big deal with the toothbrush? I guess it looked cool. All right. Um, so um, we'll talk to we'll talk to these uh, to these this one guy. Mm-hmm. He rides a bike to work. Oh, God, <laughs> I always thought about doing that. Well, how far sweaty. away do you live? How far away do you live? Probably like four or five miles. I don't know. Well, what you do is you leave early enough so that when you get to work, you dry off. You know what I mean? The sweat. Yeah, yeah you just dry. sit yeah. outside for a while and let it. Yeah, relax. Dry. Right. And in the winter time, you bundle up. You know, you know what kind of shape you'd be in doing that. I, that's why. And plus, I'd save. You know, the MTA is about to up their fees fifty dollars per month. <laughs> well. You'd be in incredible shape. You know, I've always, I, when I lived in Manhattan, I moved to New York um, in 1999, and um, the, the 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 15th time I moved there uh, to work over there at the Clear Channel station. And I lived about, I don't know, I lived at 50th and 8th, and I would walk to 40, 40th and Broadway. Okay, mm-hmm. and it was the coldest winter ever. And my producer lived in the building with me. And we would walk to work every morning, no matter what the temperature was. And he always wanted to take a cab or whatever. I got to tell you, it was invigorating. <laughs> invigorating, I tell you. And then when it was hot, well, I don't know that I made it to the summer. Uh, <laughs> I, I think I was fired before the summer. But, yeah, I, you know, the, that's a better way to get in shape than working out, you know. Now, you can't smoke on the bike while you're riding it. That doesn't, you know. Not going to help you no? at all. No. Not going to help you at all. Um, then uh, there's a guy, uh, uh, John and Susan. Uh, they have horrible movie night. And what they do is, uh, this is in Los Angeles, right? They uh, bring a bunch of people together, and one night a week, or? or I don't even many? think it's that all. I think it's more once a month. Once a month. Yeah. And they watch, like, the worst movies uh, ever ever made. And uh, we'll have a list of those uh, movies ever made. Did you go over the list, Garrett? The uh, the bottom 100? Yeah. Yeah, I looked at it. I Am mean, I in any of those movies? I don't believe so. I don't so. think so. No. Okay, good. I good. don't. I didn't know a lot of the movies either that were on that list. Oh, they, so it's like it could be in the 50s or whatever. Right. Yeah. And what would you do if Bachelor Man was in that list and we have a guest on? I don't think it is. I would wear it like a badge. Oh, you would wear that like a badge? Well, I didn't want to ask. <laughs> Look what now, it are you for, uh, Rodney Lee Conover or are you Reggie Bush right now? Who are I'm you? Rodney Lee. I see. Reggie, I had to... <laughs> Reggie Bush has left the building. Uh, let's go to Joe of Florida, 888-4102-102. Uh, Christina is at the controls today because uh, she's going to run the show by herself and she'll have some little whipping boy with her uh, on, on Monday. Uh, hey, Joe. 
Joe, how are you? Joe of Florida. Hey, Joe. Joe there? I guess not. Ah, Joe's not there. All right, fine. No, yeah, it's all Don't right. move on. It's all right, Garrett. I got the board right. right. Joe just disappeared. All right. All right. Mm-hmm. And um, mm. really? <laughs> <laughs> now that, you know what? Don't say the things. That, that was I a good said. joke right there. That was timing. Don't don't say the thing that I that I say. That Reggie. Yo. Oh no! Oh, are you there? Oh, ah, uh, yes, Joe. How are you? I'm scared, scared all of good, good. Yeah, what were you doing, Joe? Yeah, Hayden. Well, no, I'm just, I'm just cruising around, wanting to get in on this uh, conversation. Christine is whispering in your ear. Yeah, tough shit. Oh. Yeah, too bad. You mean yeah, for when, our ears only? Yeah, I mean, Joe. Come on, Joe. Joe, please. There's got to be some mystery to Christine. Well, yeah, why, why is it that you would? It's 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 for me. It's not for you. It's private. There's a button she presses uh, that she can tell me stuff. <laughs> you heard that, Joe? No, but I heard Garrett laugh. Or I heard Rodney laughing, so I assumed it was something good. <laughs> that wasn't laughter. <laughs> right on. Hey, well, I just thought maybe you'd want to share share the wealth. Stop it, Christina. Stop it. Stop it. Stop it. Stop. Don't it. stop it. Just go a little slow. No, no. Stop it. Stop it. <laughs> Christina. Hey. Stop okay, it. now stop Naughty it. Naughty girl. Yes. Naughty girl. I don't go in for that. Bad girl. Ooh. That's me laughing. Yeah, that's, right. that's actually an engineer in another room. <laughs> that Cavino or a bitch? Was it good, Joe? Was it good for you, Joe? Said Cavino or a bitch? Thank you, Joe of Florida. Last night hey, I saw you. the movie uh, The American. Oh, I heard something about this movie, Garrett. By the way. Nobody who is an American will like this movie. That may. It's a European movie, and it's George Clooney produced it, and it, mm. he shot it like two blocks from his house in Italy. Every woman that's in it, first of all, when they take their clothes off, they are completely naked the whole time uh, with this one woman. And apparently, the bush is back, at least in Europe. Every woman has a full-on uh, growth. Yes, down there. Absolutely. It's it's like and then well, how about Sasha Gray on Entourage, the porn star full bush and you know why women started shaving their bushes in the first place because porn stars started doing it that's what started that trend now going the other way well do you know why it was originally done in the porns so you could um, I don't know why so you could see better you know like it's like a it's like a film thing it was like. Well, it's like a woman with long hair, and they go, well, I can't see your face. So they in a movie, you know this, you, you have an actress work, and you got to see your face, right? So they couldn't see what they wanted to see. In, you know. Who's they? The, 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 the cinematographer. I don't want to see that. Well, that's what people watch pornos for. No. They want to see... People watch pornos to see men's dicks. No, they do not. They sure do. They don't. I Bullshit. definitely do. Have you ever watched... <laughs> Was that in my headphones? Wait a minute. Was that Christina? Was that in my headphones or was that on the air? Nope, that was on the air. That was awfully low. Porn's all about the penis. If there's no penis penis. in porn, it's boring. What are you talking about? If there's a substitute penis. I love this guy. If there's a substitute penis, it's okay. Jay, have you ever watched a porno that didn't have a giant dick in it? Yes, I watched the two women with each other. What? You were watching chicks eat each other. So you like gay porn? No, the woman is on the girl's clit or something, you know? Or something? Are licking her. Oh. I don't want to get into it. You know what? I get a little turned on. I don't want to, like, <laughs> I have two more hours left here. So I don't want to get Rodney's into Rodney's in there with you. Well, yeah, it's all bad. Jay just knocked something off the shelf. Sometime, if the penis is on the screen too long, I, I, I fast forward. I don't want to see a penis, period. Why do you want to see a penis? Well, it's pleasure. Do you want to see a guy's ass? No. Oh, but you want to see a guy's penis. No, it's part of the pornographic experience. Well, so is a guy's ass. Well, I don't want to see that. Just the penis. No, I wait for the girl's You're ass. You're a to... cock man. No, I wait for the girl's ass to get on the screen. And then the, the camera moves in, and they shaved so you can see the indentation. You can see the dick easier. No, you can see the, the, the vagina. That's why they did it. The clit and the whole thing. Stop it, Christina. The whole thing. All right. Well, let's go in the other way, and I can't, not a moment. You know, I know you're both, you know, trying to make, not a make moment funny. Too soon. It doesn't bother me in the least. I, I applaud you coming It was out. a cinemagraphic decision that spread eagle mm. to the rest of the world.
Well, tonight on, um, on my fantasy league uh, from uh, the Sirius XM uh, fantasy league that we have, I've got uh, Marcus Colston, the uh, Saints wide receiver, and then Percy Harvin has been hurt. Garrett, have we replaced him yet? They say he's going to play. And then Vasante Shanko. Shanko? Yes. So I got two Minnesota players tonight. You do. So I got to hope they score against my team. You just got to hope that it's like a 60 to 58 game. That's all I care about. Yeah. Just let him score like crazy. We have Marcus Colston, too, so you can cheer for him. Well, I will cheer for him, of course. Okay, good. Now, you know my quarterback is Peyton Manning. I know. It's unbelievable. It's unbelievable. I don't see how you're not going to win. And then the running back from Denver, is his first name Noshan Moreno? Correct. There needs to be a class to teach new mothers. There are names you probably shouldn't name your children. What what do you think No Sean meant? K N O W S H O N. I mean, what would that come from? I think it had to do something with knowledge and his dad. But I could be wrong. Knowledge and his dad. No Sean. Like the notion? You got a notion? Hmm? First name is a combination of his father's nickname, Knowledge, and his mother's name, Varashan. His father's nickname is Knowledge. Correct. Like he's a smart guy. <laughs> hey, Knowledge, get over here. <laughs> well, I asked you a question, Knowledge. Get over here. You know those guys are, I love those guys in the park. They go, what? What's that? Hold on a minute. Hey, chemistry, get over here. They got a guy that knows everything in the park, right? <laughs> You'll see some homeless guy under a tree smoking a, you know, an old beat up cigarette, you know. You go, Webster, get over here, Webster. <laughs> you know? Oh, and then uh, let's see. That's it. That's all. That's all I got. Oh, we're gonna play the um, the Steve Phillips team now. Steve Phillips is from the Mets. Was and, yes, and he works at uh, Sirius XM now. He does. I believe he's part of. Uh, he might be part of XM's MLB coverage. Oh, he used to be with the Mets. Yeah, he was the general manager. Oh yeah, I remember him. <laughs> yeah, he had... <laughs> oh boy, maybe you shouldn't appear on the channel today. <laughs> Will he be on there with me? I don't <laughs> think so. Uh, I might request that he not. Be. So tonight uh, we're playing against. Um... <laughs> oh yeah, because you know, and Rodney will tell you this. I truly believe in getting into the mind of the enemy. It's true. And and beating them down. Psychological warfare. That's right. Even though I'm not allowed to say anything about Mr. Phillips and his past. <laughs> yeah. Uh, let's go to our guest. Uh, Sean, is it Bonner or Boner? How do you say your name, Sean? Sean, Sean Boner? Bonner? Sean? Hello, Sean. That's a record. Sean? Hey, how are you? Yes. Good. Oh, we, thought you, we thought you'd already hung up, Sean. It happens. Oh, Is it uh, Sean no Boner or Sean Bonner? Bonner. Bonner. But yeah, Boner would be a hell of a name. I can tell you that right now. Yeah, my third grade class would have been delighted over that one. <laughs> you know what, Sean? I know you're smarter than me, but we don't need this within the first 30 seconds. <laughs> We don't need your your humor, <laughs> smartness humor thing. All uh, right, my my I'll, I'll buddy, my buddy uh, uh, Rodney. Rodney Lee Conover is here, and then back in New York, uh, the lovely Christina, Christina Garrett and Garrett. They're both there now. Uh, Sean a Bonner, go to a block, a block blog dot J. It's just uh, crashspace dot org. That's even better. Yeah. Go to crashspace. Dot org. Dot org? Dot org. Yeah. Dot org. Yeah. Now, here's here's why I invited you on. I read an article that let's say I have a complicated piece of equipment or something, and I needed a piece to be manufactured. Right. I would give you the specs, and you guys at Crash Space would draw it up on the computer, 
and then it would get manufactured. Is that correct? Uh, that's that's a little bit of an exaggeration, but yeah, it's sort of or that's something that that is possible and and we can do to some extent. Yes. I mean, I read about it. I'm pretty sure in Wired magazine. That's where I got right. this. Yeah, okay. so there's an overall movement um, with a, a lot of different people doing sort of 3D printing and uh, you know, like 3D fabrication of different things, and uh, it's a very sort of new, new world for a lot of people. So everybody's kind of experimenting on it on different angles, and uh, some people have much more cash invested, and some people are just sort of tinkering around. And we're a little bit lower on the uh, on the scale of of investment um, as opposed to having giant factories that can whip stuff up. But um, we, we can, we can make parts. Um, and well, the way, uh, the way that I there. read this article, the, the way yeah. that I read the article was that um, somebody needed something for a, a, a huge piece of equipment. <laughs> <laughs> but I'm sorry. I, I say huge piece of equipment and it, he gets a terrible, yeah. terrible laugh here. Now, uh, and and they sent you the they sent you the specs, and or somebody sent the specs, and you guys made it. But now you send me all of this information, and it's kind of a club. It's kind of a nerd club in Los Angeles. Is that what yeah, it is? It's def- definitely definitely a nerd club. Yeah, it's like a clubhouse. You mean you don't have any muscular football player, basketball player, athletic guys that are members of the of the community no, 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 we, do. we do we do they're 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 just undercover nerds they they don't look like they have the shell of like an athlete but the but the right. nerd you would brain. never know that yeah you would never know from a distance that they know how to send email and stuff but get them alone in a room and they can fix your computer for you it says here that you guys have little classes um yep. one of them is the futzer class where you and you tear things apart and yep. then we, we have a thing called Take Apart Tuesday. All right, Take Apart Tuesday. Yeah. So we if I came for Take apart. apart Tuesday, what? And I brought, um, you know, like a Pee Wee Herman doll that says something or whatever. What would we do with it? Well, I mean, and, and Garrett, what would you bring to Take Apart Tuesday? What would you bring? Wow, that's a good one. Because so many things apart. now, like your cell phone, you could take it apart. You yeah. wouldn't yeah, be. We've taken, we've taken apart cell phones, computers. Uh, Monitors, Kindles, iPhones, everything. Then what? Then everything. what do you do? What do you do? Well, so what, what we've done is we've we've taken them apart and tried to find the pieces that that do do stuff with them. So in the like in the iPhone, we try to find where's the GPS thing. What's what's the thing that actually is inside this that knows where you are and try to find that. Or or in a monitor, we'll try to find what what's the stuff that actually makes this light up. As opposed to you know just turn on and, and a computer will try to find you know where's where's the data actually stored versus you know process so you know it's it's kind of an educational thing you know if you have this stuff at your house you don't want to take it apart because you you bought it and you take it apart you might break it you won't be able to do anything with it but this is sort of you know for those curious folks who who actually do want to see what's going on and not risk breaking their own stuff so we get to take it apart and break it and and then you know see see how it all works on the inside. When you open it up, do you have a manual yep. that shows no. you what? No, 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 not never. <laughs> no manuals. We have uh, a lot of times we have to try to saw through, uh, you know, pr- protective things that try to prevent you from opening them. Uh, you used to be able to open and, and work on everything, but now uh, companies don't don't like you messing around inside their stuff. They just want you to buy a new one. So it's a little harder to get into things now than it used to be. But, uh, no, are you, are you a hacker also? I mean, the, uh, yeah, I I'm, think in, in, in England, there's a huge yeah. uh, lawsuit going on now. Uh, right. And it's I think it's Rupert Murdoch's um, uh, newspapers, right. uh, the, the Tribune. They hacked into the two princes. What is it? William and Harry. William and Harry. They hacked right. into their phones. They also hacked into the to the prime minister's um, assistants and they and some of the you know the members of parliament and all that. And they were writing these stories that they were getting right. from the the phones. Could you do that? No, I, I didn't do that. And, and we. No, I didn't say did you do it. No, I said <laughs> could you could you? Do uh, it? Well, I, I I don't know maybe, but the. Those things are all very insecure, and that's that's kind of a, a larger problem. But hackers don't doesn't real. That's more of a media and, and kind of Hollywood uh, definition of it. Hackers, as we define it, is really just more people who want to you know take things apart and see how they work and see what new things they can build with the pieces, whether that's software or hardware or whatever. Um, it's really just more people who like to tinker with things. 
Can you make any money on this Take Apart Tuesday? Have you found anything or made a better actually, product? Actually, or? actually yes. We've uh, we've taken apart broken monitors and then found uh, chips inside that we're selling on eBay for like a hundred bucks each. And it was just a, just like a processing chip. And uh, these were monitors that were left on the side of the street. There was, you know, somebody was just throwing them out. And so we we sold a bunch of those and, and made some cash. You mean the the company doesn't care about that, right? Right. Yeah. No. I mean, they're broken. It was as far as the people who purchased them and everything. They thought it was garbage. They couldn't get it to work. What are you doing? Now there was a, a big truck that drove by. Sorry about that. What are you want to uh, take that apart? Take that big truck <laughs> apart? Yeah. If it stops, I'm I'm all over it. Now, Sean, um, uh, a Bonner, go to. Um, Crashbase dot dot org. Uh, you're in LA, but people can join your little club. You have a little club. Well, yeah. So we we have a group, and we we have meetings, and different people working on different projects. But uh, you know, we're we're p- sort of part of a larger hackerspace movement, and there's there's hackerspaces popping up all over all over the country, all over the world. So uh, I noticed you guys are in New York. There's several there's several hackerspaces in New York. You guys can drop by, check them out in person. Uh, there's a place called the New York City Resistor, and there's a place called Alpha One Labs. Uh, now, Garrett, would, would you do this, Garrett? Would you go to this thing and and watch them, and 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 your curiosity would be uh, peaked to the point where you, you would join in something like this, Garrett? I ever? definitely like taking things apart. My problem was getting it back together, <laughs> you know. But I feel like these guys, like I have no knowledge of any technical ability at all, so I feel yeah, like I would a, be left we're out. Sort of- no, no, we're sort of embracing the the no knowledge of it, and that's why we're we're, we're diving into it is to create a safe environment where it's okay not to know anything, and we're not worried about whether whether it ends up working later or not. Oh, right. Is there a lot of man on man hugging at these meetings? Not a lot, no. No. How many women are members of the of the club? Uh, I, about forty percent. Wow. Yeah. Yeah. Well, they're women now. What does that mean? <laughs> Took apart a couple of the men, made them in the room. Oh, God. Hacked them. <laughs> hack, gave them a good hacking. <laughs> you know, I was one of these guys when I was young. You were? I was. When I was a, a kid, I couldn't <clears throat> wait. Like, my dad, once my dad brought home a transmission... And I was just all over that transmission. I took it apart. I tried to figure out how it worked. I took out some of the moving parts and made little toys out of it. I was just like this yeah, guy this, only. This used, to be an, this used to be an okay thing, you know, like pop-up yeah. mechanics, magazine and all this stuff. It was sort of encouraged to, like, go fix this in your garage. You could, you know, tinker but and I would make re- stuff. And- but you do this? I would repurpose it. Yeah, exactly. You know, we, we, we've done stuff. We've made a, we took an old VCR and uh, turned it into an automatic cat feeder. There you go. I, yeah. I made a. I made a. I, I took apart an old radio that had the tubes and everything, and I made a little putting surface out of it. <laughs> this like a, it was, this yeah, is it was, what most radio guys it? do. Hey, give us a call at eight 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 four one zero two one zero two. If you tell us what you've apart. Pu- taken apart and what you've made with it, okay? <laughs> We're talking to to Sean Bonner. I made a little putt putt course. Oh, you, know, you had to ding across the thing and jump over the wire, and you know, I'll tell you, I cool. have always been. Um, uh, positive all my life that I I have no technical ability. I didn't either, though. I was just taking it apart and trying to figure it out. I had no technical ability at all. Well, th- but but I I uh, stay away from it. If I brought one of my sons to one of your meetings, I mean, yeah. would you would you welcome us into the group? I mean, what? How yeah, do we do it? Absolutely. What do we do? Yeah, we have we have many many open to the public events. People show up and just sort of. I don't want the public there. I want to be focused on like a celebrity. Right, right. Yeah, we could we could do a, a big like come out and meet and greet thing. No, we time. don't need a meet and greet. But I want it to be kind of. Uh, Jay, you know, what do you want to take? Jay, apart? you could make you could uh, sell headshots. No, yeah, no, yeah. Could no, <laughs> no. Can you take apart Jay's hair? No, I would want. I would want and repurpose it. You could repurpose <laughs> my Some of the my plugs. Yeah. Uh, here's the thing: what I'd want to do is is it'd be you and you know eight or ten other guys or women or whatever, and my son and I would go and we would enjoy ourselves. I don't want to go where there's like would there be a hundred people there. He doesn't really like. No, the I don't want the public this is a, there. This is a nerd clubhouse. There's never a hundred people on, on good okay. nights, There's thirty people. Yeah. Now, do you allow beer or cocktails or pot or is there any imbibements? No, well, I mean. No, I mean, we uh, you know we follow the the law of the land, 
So if, oh. if uh, people are over 21 and they've brought their own beverages, they're they're welcome to do that. We don't uh, we don't do anything illegal. <laughs> so what what so now how did you make an automatic cat feeder out of a VCR? Well, we just sort of uh, realized that with an old VCR, you can program it to do certain things at certain times, right? So you mm-hmm. can get it to turn on motors at certain times when it would start recording. And so we uh, we just sort of hooked some uh, some pet food containers up and and repurposed those those motors so that instead of starting to record on a tape, they would open and close uh, a lever that would allow cat food out at certain times. And then you can program it with the remote control and set it to like 9 p.m. tonight to dish out half a cup of cat food. <laughs> but did the cat food come out of the 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 shelf that the VCR that the tape would have been on? <laughs> no, it was on the, it was on the side of it. You know what? Don't laugh at me when I ask a fucking question. <laughs> you know what? That. And don't <laughs> laugh at me when I say don't <laughs> laugh at me when I ask a fucking question. I was I was uh, enjoying the idea. Because oh. now I now I want to uh, make 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 the the cat food come out of the front. Yes, that's idea. you see. I would be there over your shoulder, and then this yeah. is what I would do. Sean, make it see, for this me. Is, this is the problem <laughs> with the, with a bunch of nerds sitting around. Nobody's got this kind of creativity, right? And you got to have you come in there to point out like it's got to come out of the tape hole, and then everybody is so it's a better product. So what's going to happen like in two, what, Tuesday night, like in a two, three They're weeks? They're making a dog feeder out of it. <laughs> what's going to happen in, in a couple of Tuesday nights? Can I come by one Tuesday night? Yeah, yeah, any Tuesday night. Swing on by. In L.A., right? Culver yeah, City. we're in L.A. And call, would you come too, Rod? I'll come. Yeah, it'd be fun. Now, um, Sean, what what is something that you've Can made? Can you guys remove fat? <laughs> what is something that you've made? Well, let me say something about removing fat. Okay. You know the machine that's used yes. to the liposuction. The liposuction tube. tube. Sean, do you know do you know what that is? Yes, I know what that is. That was the abortion sucker from France. Right. That guy oh, yeah. is still alive and sure that is. is the same with the with the you even laugh at abortion? <laughs> no, I'm laughing at it. Uh, that's the, it's the, you know, that's no, the you laughed at abortion. I started going to a very divisive, you know, idea that's happened. That's you know, caused on, our I'm country on, terrible. I'm on, terrible I'm on West problem. Coast time, so there's a there's a lag here. Well, I, I don't I don't know what's going on. We invite you on as a guest, and the next thing you know, there's laughter. You're laughing at dead babies. Laughing. At, well, and, and right, and, right. And, anyway. Way to go, bringing the show down, dude. Now, Sean, what do you do when you're not uh, with the people at Crash Space? What is it that you do? Uh, I consult with a lot of companies and uh, mm-hmm. schools and sort about of what? investment people about startups and consumer Internet stuff mostly. Mm-hmm. And, and you tell them how to, how to attract investors? I sort of help them figure out what, what would be good investors, what's, what's appropriate for investors. I help investors find good companies. Uh, I help put those two pieces together. I help people Jay and, who are Jay and I have a project. Refine, yeah. refine their ideas a bit. It says here you were a dishwasher at one time. I was. That was my first job. And then after you took the uh, part of the equipment apart and it sprayed all over, what'd you do after right. that? Yeah, Did like you do it in a big machine, and, like at a restaurant, and then you put it into the the big machine, or you washed it by hand? No, I well, I you know I had to wash a little bit, and it was a seafood restaurant, so there there's stuff caked all over things. I had to scrub a bit by hand and then I stuck it in a big machine. Were you able to make something that made your job easier? No, I hated that job. I got out as soon as possible. I was going to say, he invented the, the dishwasher and was <laughs> a <lot of> job. <laughs> now, uh, have you made anything out of this class or stolen some idea from somebody that's come in on these free Tuesday nights that has turned into a business or something you could sell beside the chips and the automatic cat feeder? Right. No, this is this has been mostly kind of just just hobby things. However, going back to what you were talking about initially, the uh, the, the sort of the 3D printing that was that was conceived in New York at, at one of the the hackerspace I was speaking about, New York City Resistor. A bunch of a bunch of the people who were there were sort of talking about 3D printing, and they were very excited about it and trying to figure out ways. And they created this this thing called MakerBot, uh, which is a, a flourishing company now, where you can you can buy your own 3D printer and put it together and Start printing printing things out at your house, and you that's getting, the company that. When you are, say, are you, get, are you getting a taste off that? 
No, it wasn't him. It was in New York. Oh, I see. Yeah, so right. when you say 3D printer, that's yeah. the thing I called you about. Right, you, exactly. You put the this this idea into yep. the computer, and the computer makes the piece you need. Exactly. Now that's that's why I called you. How does like let's say it's in the medical industry and there's right. a as, as a piece you need that makes a rib, something mm -hmm. or other. You would put it in the computer and you'd put all the specs in there and you press a button, and the machine literally manufactures the piece and spits it out of a hole. Uh, well, so if you think of icing on a cupcake, how it sort of gets layered on top of it. That's yeah. That's sort of how this works. So it sort of prints out a liquid that becomes a solid. And so it prints it out, you know, in a, in a specific order and on top of each other. It's, and it sort It's of like the silly putty factory. Built, Remember exactly. That? So it yeah. builds it up from nothing. And who, de who, who developed this, comp this, this printer process. that could make a piece of equipment that I would actually take and it would be operational in a machine? Well, so there's, it's a single, this stuff is a, it's sort of a single material, you know, so it's just plastic or it's just metal or it's just, you know, one other thing. So it's not, it's not several different kind of things all together. It's just one solid thing. So, you know, you could, you could make a new, uh, let's say your oven at home, the, the knob broke off. We have a member uh, here in Los Angeles who made a whole set of replacement knobs for his oven. Um, we've had people who've made new light switches for, for their house. For like no, wait, no, wait. Where is the piece of equipment that the oven knobs come out of? You can own that piece of equipment? Absolutely. What does that cost? It costs 700 bucks for a kit that you make yourself, and you can make it in a weekend. Really and, th and then you have $700 invested in knobs you could have bought for, like, Eighty dollars. Well, she got a lot of broken stuff, though. Could pay off. Right. Yeah, but then he continues to go on from there. That's and right. And you know how it works. You learn something. What? Now, could you go online and say I could make Maytag oven uh, whatever, yes. and and you send me your the, the, what what the thing is, and that would Maytag get mad at me for making those? Uh, I don't know. Uh, it probably would depend whether it was something they were selling as well. Um, yeah. If it's something that they're not selling. And there's no way for you to get it. You're probably you're probably fine. But if you're cutting into their their market share, then they probably have something to say about that. So you wait by the machine, and and how long will it take to make the knob? Well, depending on on how big what you're making is, those, those knobs that he made took about thirty minutes each. So from, you know that's from, pretty amazing. I from, Garrett, yeah, this from, is from this is why this is why I wanted Sean on. Somebody sent in some specs on something they couldn't find. They couldn't buy it for some right. reason. And the guy, they, they they researched it, and they found whatever the resistor, whatever it is that you found, I know about. And the, and the guy says, yeah, I'll make it for you. And the guy said, what do you mean? He goes, just send me the specs. And it was some amount of money, like 500 bucks. I'll make it for you. And the next thing you know, the guy gets this, this thing in his hand, puts it in the machine, and it worked, and that's what the article was about. Yeah, there's uh, there there's people who do that. Absolutely. Wow. Now my it's son the, is a gunsmith. My it's son is future, a gun. For sure. My son is a gunsmith, right? Yeah. Would they make stuff out of metal for like weapons? Well, so this, the the maker bots that we have uh, only print in plastic, but there are much higher ends, much 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 more expensive ones that that do metal. And yeah, they could they could absolutely do gunsmithing. Wait a minute. Does the machine make a crashing, crunching sound while you're sitting with the machine? Like, like you know, it's going like, you know. You know, it does all. You can hear it making the thing? No, it's more like a. Uh, 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 uh. Think, it, it's printing it. Think of a, it's like a printer. So it just prints layers on top of each other. And then inside of the machine, would the machine be, how big would it be as big as a car? How big would the machine be? No, the uh, the ones that we have, the MakerBots, they're smaller than a microwave. And these and then, layers uh, come out, and then you have to put them together to make the piece of equipment. Yeah, depending on how big each each item can be, about uh, like the size of your fist, or you know, maybe the size of a cupcake. Um, and then if you need something bigger, you just sort of attach them after they've been made. Wow. 
This yeah. is nuts. The world is the world is it's, crazy. It's the now. future. It's, yeah, it is. It's, it's Could you make like let's say you had one of these machines, yeah. and you had like a metal machine, you had a plastic machine, you have this. Could you manufacture in your home a gun? Could you draw up specs well, for a nineteen eleven? Yeah, I mean, you know, yeah, uh, sure, forty five I mean, caliber gun. Gun. Wow. You can, I mean, you can make a gun out of a piece of pipe, right? So <laughs> it's yeah. pretty, pretty, pretty simple. So, yeah, it's uh, it's not a very complicated, you know, complicated design. So, yeah, you could, and all, especially in 1911, those things, you know, the specs for all those things are all over the place and it's been the same design for 100 years. So you could you can put together any of that stuff, I think. Go to crashspace.org. Uh, and what have you made with your machine, that machine you have? Uh, mostly I've made a lot of gifts for people actually. I've made little, little sort of statuettes and some jewelry and some things that I've, that I've made and given to people. I've made some, uh, some can openers and some, uh, just little sort of trinket things to sort of show off. I haven't really made anything world changing. If, if I came on a Tuesday night, could I make a little statue of myself? Uh, well, you, we would need a way to get the file of you. We don't have like a laser scanner that would be able to digitize you into it. Mm-hmm. But if you already had that file, then yeah, we could. But you could print out a little Statue of Liberty or something. Yeah, you should file. get a Oscar statue. Yeah, I could build a fake Oscar statue. <laughs> yeah, and put that in the in the front room there next to the. Yeah. you know, people don't really know. I've won Emmys, but people don't know. There's a statue next to my Emmy that was Father of the Year because right. I gave a huge uh, donation, um, and it looks kind of like an Oscar. Yeah, and people, people come in and go, enough. oh, my God, you want they And you could say yes, they wouldn't know. You know what I mean? Yeah. You go, right. yeah, yeah, I was in Mr. Holland's Opus. So, oh, yeah, I saw that movie. Like that, you know? Right. I, I was in Teen Wolf. You could print out a whole bunch of trophies for yourself with one of these things, for sure. Wait a minute. If Reggie Pre- Bush gives Pre- his Heisman trophy her. back, Reggie Bush yeah. might have to give the Heisman back, right? Do you know about this? I've heard about it, yes. You read the papers or go online and read, you know, sports yeah. pages? All right. Right. Um, do you know the Saints are playing Minnesota tonight? Uh, no, I don't know about that. Huh. Anyway, so if Reggie Bush has to give the Heisman back, could you make a new one for him? It's kind sure. of a dark, heavy plastic kind of a thing. Yeah, it's no problem. That's cool. You could, All you right. Could, you could definitely copy a Heisman. Could copy a Heisman. That's, yeah, we stand in for it, right? Right. Well, yeah. listen, uh, Sean. Thank you, Sean no uh, Bonner. And by the way, they probably have this in lots of cities around the country. But you're at CrashSpace dot org, and yeah. you're and physically you go, you in Culver to, City. Yeah. Right. And if you go to hackerspaces dot org, you can find you can find a hackerspace that's close to you, wherever you're at. Well, I'm going to go into my son's room uh, tonight, and I'm going to go, hey. Let's let's drive to L.A. and go. What for? I go. You know, we're gonna go to this um, this uh, hacker space. This why? Because I'm a nerd. And I'm gonna go. Well, <laughs> yeah, yeah, that's what. Because yeah, that's I all he do. does. He sits by the goddamn computer. He and I do not speak. We have no relationship whatsoever. This may be the way for my son and I to bond. Could you make a new son for me in the machine? Could you? Not build a child that I could deal with, give a, perhaps? Yeah, give us, give us like another six months or eight months, and we might be able to pull that off. I like the way he looks. It's just the inner workings that I'm not happy with. Right, sure. All sure. right. So that would be the threat. I would say, listen, you know, if this doesn't work out, I'll just have another fucking kid made. How's that sound? Yeah, get it, get it going, for sure. Well, Sean, thank you. You will definitely see me one Tuesday night in Culver City. Excellent. I look forward to it. Thanks All right, for man. Me. Thank you. All right. Uh, let's go to Rob in North Carolina. Uh, Rob, it's Jay Thomas. What would you do? So what would you make on. with one of these machines? What would you make? Rob in North Carolina. You hey, still there? Charles. You calling Charles? Wow. What's that? Who's this? Charles. Don't turn up. Your name is Rob. Charles. Your name is Charles. That's right. Uh, Garrett, the man's name is Charles. How did? Why did you put Rob? Even you had asked three times. No, he said Charles. I heard him mm. very, very clearly. Well, I so said now, Rob. You, what do you want to talk about? And he answered. 
you have Christina, who's mm. supposed to be making mistakes. All you're doing today is answering the phone and listening to Americans give you their names, and you fucked that up. Well, I was a little distracted. I was looking at the uh, guests That's we're so having rise. on tomorrow. The uh, Midget Basketball League <laughs> <laughs> called the New York Towers. The New York Towers are coming in tomorrow. <laughs> the best is a team photo of all them standing on the court and the ribs like 50 feet above them. <laughs> are they coming into the studio? One of the guys is. <laughs> <laughs> really? <laughs> okay. All right. That's tomorrow at Howard 101. Uh, Charles in North Carolina, if you had one of these amazing machines, that we just heard about. What what would you want to make with it? Hey, well, uh, I'd like to set up and do uh, custom dildos and butt plugs and things. <laughs> would you get Sean back on the air, please, Garrett? Okay. <laughs> now, we started doing this more frequently just recently. And because for years when we got the guests back on, it was it, it never turned out well. But for the last, what, four times, it's been right on, hasn't it, Garrett? It has been right yeah, on. Yeah, we've uh, turned the tide. We definitely have. I think that it's a question that begs an answer. I mean, the answer is yes. But at the same time, why would you even order anything ever again once they get these machines down to, like, a couple hundred bucks, right? Hey Charles, the machine is only yeah. seven hundred dollars. It's only, I mean, if if now it's it's seven hundred, it won't be long before it's a hundred bucks, right? Yeah, man, and I could make a fortune at that point. Well, the thing is, is you'll be in heavy compet. No, you'll be in heavy competition. Heavy. Competition. But I mean, I mean, just think you can go to the fair, get you a butt plug in if I. You would sell butt plugs at a state fair. Yeah. Carnivals, all that stuff. You mean right next to hot dog on a stick or whatever it is on a stick. <laughs> yeah. You would have the butt plug. When you throw the balls to knock down the little dolls, you'd have the butt plug concession right next right to there. it. Right there. Right there. Can you not get Sean back, Garrett? I called him. It went right to voicemail. All right. We don't need Sean. Yeah. we got a great idea. And Charles, anyway, thank you. that's a great yeah. idea anyway, Jay. Butt plug on the stick. Butt plug on a stick. Thank you very much. Thank you, Charles. All right. Oh. Thank you. All right. I had to come back in here. <laughs> Trying to get things under control? Uh, this is some radio station out there just talking about butt plugs. No, no. His idea was. Yeah, I heard it. I know you heard it, but I wanted to repeat it Go to ahead. you. Um, and this always, is my. It's always funnier when you're. No, no, this is my question to you. Yeah. This is going to stop any manufacturing problems. Well, for it, it'll stop manufacturing. If you need something, tennis shoe, let's say. Mm -hmm. Let's say you need mm -hmm. a new pair mm -hmm. of new Nikes pair. or whatever. Yeah. If you had these machines, you would just make those the, any uh, shoes, whatever you needed. But they would come out as one piece of material it wouldn't be like your original nike shoe oh it doesn't come out as the whole shoe no it, it, it would be your shoe in layers of the same material now a butt plug would work no wait a minute the guy said the that problem the is getting the plaster of paris up your ass and then be, <laughs> be able to hold on line up what plaster of paris isn't there plaster of paris involved <laughs> no it's plastic or it's it's a soft rubber so you're gonna sit there bent mm -hmm. over with this soft rubber in your colon. You know what? Long enough to make a butt plug. You... Oh, you mean to make the specs? Yeah. Oh, yeah, that's right. You'd have to mold it out of something. Yeah, all of a sudden I'm right. <laughs> well, no. Yeah, you just it's just like the light bulb just went no, off. No, oh, Rodney's would... correct. No, you would buy a, a existing butt plug. No, no, but if you wanted one for yourself, wouldn't you want it custom made to your I own? know. I, you know what? I think... I don't want your butt plug. Can I be honest with you? I believe most assholes, one size fits all. Well, if that's your experience, fine. You know what? I bet you I bet you if there are three different size of openings. Garrett, what do you think? Small, medium, and large? Or would it be petite? Would it go petite? <laughs> Patoot. <laughs> Patoot. <laughs> hey, by the way, in the American, he meets this. Uh, oh, yeah. He meets a hooker, right? And? Well, he's, you know, only his sex, he's, you know. It's a mess down there. Yeah. And then, and by the way, he is a gunsmith. That's why it's kind of an interesting movie. But, who? 
they it, in Europe you're going to see the whole thing. In the United States, they just show her face. He is definitely, you know, in the in, entering in the, out, the out hole in the out and shoving it and grabbing her, and she's going go slow and the whole deal. And I'm sitting there going, she's a hawker. I mean, come on, this can't be the first time, you know. So when he rolls her over, you know what he says to her? He's, you you uh, don't have to pretend. Yeah. That's what he said. To I, I'm, I'm, there's like eight people in the theater. I started laughing out loud because. Why is that fun? In the movie they met, you don't have to pretend you like screwing me. Right. I was thinking, don't pretend it hurt when it was going in. That's what I was thinking. She's a hooker. Been all kind of crap in there. Lucky you didn't find people's class rings up in there. Or a mold. <laughs> some, sort of, some, sort of a, some sort of machine. Yeah. All right. Or Sean. Well, I think we have again we've, we've, we've veered off into gay territory. No, not again. no, not gay. Well, I think butt plugs are No. Christina, butt plugs are not exclusively gay. I didn't say exclusively, but but no. but no, primarily. No, primarily. Would you say that, Christina? Um, you know what? No, hold on, hold on. Let her answer. No, no, I mean, I don't think so. I think no. that you don't there think are butt plugs guys, a gay thing. I think it goes both ways. I think that what people do behind their bedroom doors is. Uh, up I'm to not saying it's bad. I'm no, just I know, but I'm just saying they from. may not. They may not own up to it as much as a gay man. You would. lay out your equipment. You and your so, wife, girlfriend, are so together. So hetero guys like the butt. Plugs. I think yeah, so. hetero 100%. guys really like their butt licked, right? Okay, so mm-hmm. is it time for a break? Because I have to go to the bathroom. <laughs> I'm going to tell you one quick story, and then and then we're going to go to break. Um, I've been dating a woman, and and you know did everything with her, and the whole deal. And I mean, you know, when a guy says, "You know, I did everything," that's what he's talking about. Yeah, I'm. But I would do. I mean, but like, what? no, uh, that what you said after that. Yeah, oh, like, all of it. But I would do everything with her and to to her, right? Everything to her, and she enjoyed everything else. So one night. We get in, you know, get the thing, and she goes, and she whips out the 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 the, the thing with the balls on it, the butt plug balls, <laughs> the dildo, and she says, butt "I'm going to show you how good you make me." Feel. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> who used to so, do a bit about that? Where he's, I don't he, know. Yes, he, he oh, he just died. Who's the comic that just Robert died? Schimmel? Robert Schimmel used to do a bit. Schimmel I, died. Yeah, yes. Schimmel died. When? Uh, oh, last on week. Thursday or Friday? I did not know that. Car accident. Yeah. You mean the guy with the guy that beats cancer gets killed in a car accident? Yeah. Wait a second. Was I off the air, Garrett, the day he died? Um, no, I it must... was over the weekend, I believe. Oh, maybe over the weekend. Friday, I, I think it was. Friday yeah. night. Do you know I didn't read about it in the paper and I did not hear That's about it? What's funny, that, not funny, but what's terrible about it is that it's not even being, nobody's well, talking about you it. You know, the truth is Schimmel's a comics comic. He's not a, he's not a guy that's for, <laughs> for everyday use for the public. He's Do you just think not. he killed himself? No. no, his daughter was God, driving no. the car. Yeah. Oh my God! And that's the daughter. He married the daughter's best friend, and that's what caused the big rift in their family. You know that, right? And then mm-hmm. she drove right off a cliff, literally. Is the daughter dead too? Is, no. Did the daughter die? No. no. And I, I want to say that huh. there was somebody else in the car also. I think that there were maybe daughter and. You son. know, I'll look it up because. I just saw. Well, he was on the show, Garrett. What yeah, a couple of months ago. ago. Yeah, he yeah. asked me to marry him when he was up at Sirius and wrote my mother a letter asking oh for my, my hand in marriage. No, he did, I, really? Yeah. Oh my God! I had no. That's idea. That's a good move. I gotta try that. <laughs> I dated. We're talking him. about a I dead just, person. Yeah, but I just learned a new move. Yeah, but we should celebrate his life. We could talk about it. It's fine. Okay, let's celebrate his life. He used to do this bit where he would go. You know, I hear all these guys bragging that they that, that they butt fuck, they butt fuck, and I'm thinking, how do you ask for that? You know, what do you say? Hey, honey, can I uh, can I move it down two inches? And so I I decided to ask my wife one night. Hey, honey, can we try that anal thing? She said, Sure, I'd love to. And she pulled out a big corn cob and she goes, You first, that's, right? That was the last time I asked. Well, in 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 my real life, and so I didn't want to say no or whatever. So, you know, we're making out, doing the whole thing. And the next thing you know, I get in the whatever the position is. You, you get, did? And the next thing you know, oh, man. she is working me over. And I was biting on the sheets that my hand. I want to tell you. It okay, was big the, question. The most horrifying experience. Yeah, you answered it. It feels like you're life. pooping, right? 
you know what? It was, it stung, it, it was uncomfortable, there was never a moment that it got okay. And I had, I kept saying, oh no, it's great. It'll be, it'll be great, yeah. Oh yeah. Oh, and then she wanted me to like look at, I, you know what? Let's just kiss. <laughs> <laughs> what do you do with it afterwards, man? Don't you got to like run to the garbage or how something? Do you, mm. Don't you, you got to like immediately deal with that How do you eat situation? with each other afterwards? That's a weird... You need, you need alcohol, that's all. But kill, you, kill with your them. hand, you wash it? That is a... No, so with the wiper thing, with the... But with, don't you got to immediately deal with that situation? Uh, we'll look it up and be right back. Uh, tonight, I believe, at 8 o'clock, uh, be on uh, Fantasy Football Channel, Sirius 211. XM 147. I'll definitely be on before the Saints in Minnesota. At uh, uh, 810. At schedule. 810 Eastern Time tonight, Fantasy Channel, Sirius 211, XM 147. <clears throat> we'll be uh, uh, talking fantasy uh, football. Um, that guy in line one is, get rid of him. That's a sneak. Can you hear us right now? No. It's a dirty sneak. He just wanted to flesh it out. No, I don't believe that's Dave of Washington. I think that's Martin of Washington. Oh, really? Oh, yeah. They use fake names. They're playing you today, boy. But why would he go with Hansi's Washington? Hansi's going to call you. Hansi. Oh, he know because he you know, thinks. You know, you know Garrett? Yeah. Magic Jack. You can If you call on Magic Jack, <laughs> yeah. you can put any area code on there. Yeah. He's <laughs> playing you, man. It's true. He's playing you. Nice going, Garrett. Why don't, we, why def- don't we talk to him and say... I think you're oh, afraid he's not to gonna... talk about what he wants to talk about. Oh, no. What he's, is that? He's right there. Oh, I'm yeah. not afraid of anything. <laughs> Dave. <laughs> right. Dave of Washington. What can Jay Thomas do for you? Dave. Jay Thomas. Jay Thomas. Uh, just a matter of clarification. Uh, hold on. Put him on hold. Put him on hold. Christina, isn't that Martin? That's her boyfriend. She'll never sell him out. Wait, I didn't hear him because I'm trying to find your Robert Chimmel bit. Can I have him oh. talk a little bit more? All right, let me go ahead, Dave. Okay. Dave, talk some more, Dave. Uh, this is Dave. My name is Dave. I call you from Battle Put him on hold. Put him on hold. Is that Martin? Totally not Martin. Oh. Right, totally not. I'm sorry. Yes, Dave, uh, I'm hold, sorry. Uh, hold on. I'm waiting for something. I'm sorry, Garrett. Uh, that is Dave of Washington. Apology accepted. <laughs> Asshole. <laughs> <laughs> hey, you know what, Garrett? I'm glad your parents broke up and it fucked you up. Oh. Thank you. Okay. Me too. Okay. Hey, yeah. Hey, way to be raised by a single dad. What is that supposed to mean? I try and he hurt. He just tries to deep. hurt. Yeah. I try to hurt as deeply as I can hurt. I know shit about people. And by the way, that mole on your back, it may be cancer. Oh, that's, that hurts the most. I think. All right, Dave of Washington, go ahead. Are you sure? Yes, now I'm I positive. Just- yeah. I just wanted to find out if I just heard you say you took some piece of plastic or rubber up the ass. I did, but it was in heterosexual sex. We've been debating that around here. It's about <laughs> as close to gay as I can imagine. No, it isn't <laughs> gay. It's a, he said close. It's still hetero. No, it you isn't blow gay. Anybody. It's very, no, it's, very close. I'm with a woman. Now, Dave, what would you say this was? Uh, Jay was at camp, and, and his, his, mm-hmm. his male... Little camp. Chris Kleinschmidt. They they felt each other up. No, we didn't. They felt their penises. No, we. They well, put their no, that's, feet that's on each other's our, penises. We put our socked feet oh, on sock. each other's sorry, penises. There was, a, there was protection. Like we were laying. It was nap time, and we were laying. <laughs> Is that what they call you it? know head to toe or whatever you want to call it. Sixty nine, I believe they call no, it vernacular. No, no, and and what we, was it? No, oh, no, seventy seven. No, you we, what is it? His leg went in between mine and mine. That's sixty nine. No, no, no. We're, Dude, I've, I've been in sixty nine before. No, that's what it is. My head was here. His head was here. Oh, you, oh, hear, you guys you were, were scissoring. In. Yeah. No, oh, no. Yeah, they, Jay, oh, yeah. oh, open mouth, we insert scissors. foot. Just shut no, we weren't. No, just you know go what? To the, go to the side. Hey, the Christina, he did put his foot in my mouth. A couple of times. <laughs> so we were discovered. So it was. It was, and we rubbed each. We were thirteen years old. We rubbed. Oh, that's it. That's a re- good reason. <laughs> yeah, that's a great age. Because at thirteen, I definitely didn't know well, that you, was my no, friend's penis. Wasn't was it? He, who was it that that? Gets off on their mother, wasn't it? No, that's a different show I worked on. Never mind. Sorry. 
I thought it was you. Someone I associated with... with you because you're such a weirdo in bed. <laughs> no, I'm not a weirdo no, in bed. not you, Garrett. Oh, I don't know anything about Garrett. <laughs> now, Martin, here, I mean, Dave of Washington. Uh, Dave, Here's is a... that gay, the Boy Scout thing? Uh, uh, I, I didn't call to talk about that. I'm just wondering, uh, John Thomas Terrell, how fucking honest can you be? I appreciate your honesty. Well, now he's off the air. <laughs> Get rid of talk him. Talk to you later. Get rid of him. Get rid of him. What uh, you, merit badge did you get for that? Hand and foot. <laughs> hand and foot. We blows. <laughs> <laughs> okay. We'll be right back. Got a broken heart again. It must be the main time. Well, panel uh, uh, JTX, uh, old Jay Thomas' son. Um, He's getting mellow in his age. No, this is, no, turn it up. Turn it up. I know this song. Ever came oh, it's a joke. It's a joke. You're playing into it. I want a party like yeah. I'm going to party like a rock star. All right. But, you know, Smile is number one in Australia. And uh, it's doing great in the United States with Uncle Cracker. Somebody's going to make it and use a commercial. Use it in a commercial. Which one's that, Smile? Yeah. You know, like a toothpaste or something. That's where the real money's going to That's be. where it is. And then... Um, the Jonas Brothers chose one of his songs. Now, of course, all the fun you make of the Jonas Brothers, I not anymore. No. We love them. Hearts of gold. Love them. Love them. Absolutely love them. Uh, very upset to hear that Robert Schimmel passed away. I'm sorry that I didn't know. Rodney mentioned one of his great bits. Christina, if you have it, let's yep. play it. All right. Let's do it, Robert. Do a lot of weird things, you know. Guys have a great way of getting women to try stuff in bed. Do you love me? <laughs> yeah. How much? A lot. A lot, a lot. Why? What do you want me to do? Well, I was thinking if I could go in the back door. Yeah, you can go in the back door. You can go in the front door. You can jump out the fucking window for all I care. Just stay away from my asshole. I remember I wanted to try that once with my wife. I said, why don't you lay on your stomach and let me go in the other way? And she pulled out her vibrator and said, let me do you first. <laughs> After that, you really don't feel like doing much of anything. Today. So maybe a good long cry. I knew it wasn't going to be good when I saw her holding it like this. Here, is this what you wanted to do to me? Take it out of the box first. Wow. Huge laugh. Things don't belong up your ass, you know? Gee, thanks for that tip, Bob. <laughs> I went out with a girl once. She said, you want to have the greatest orgasm in the world? Listen to this. I'm going to stick a knotted rag up your ass, right? <laughs> Wrong. She said, no, it's a real thing. It's called the Japanese love knots. I stick it up there, and just when you're ready to come, I'm going to yank it out. It's going to be like the 4th of July. Yeah, it's going to be like the 4th of July the next time I shit normal. <laughs> now, when it comes to my ass, I don't like the word yank right off the bat. Honey, I don't want to rag up my ass. <laughs> Especially when I see her taking it out of the trunk of her car. <laughs> she said, well, how about a string of beads? I said, what are you, Monty Hall? This is not to make a deal here. <laughs> but I figure, what the hell? You only go around this crazy old world once, right? And who's going to know? No. Someone at the hospital gave the beads removed? <laughs> doctor pulled a string and I came like a wildcat. I just wish my mom and dad weren't there. Oh. First the popsicle and now the necklace, huh? Buddy? Well, God rest his soul. Yes. Wow. I am so sorry I did not know that. Five. You're sad. Funny, funny guy, Robert Schimmel. There is a reality to making a movie or a TV show that uh, 
Uh, any actor knows, certainly uh, Rodney Lee Conover and I know, no matter how hard or, or awful it is, um, you you know you work just as hard as at a bad one as you do right. at a Sometimes. good one, and and you don't know, and you really don't know until it's all over. You can be in one you think stinks, and then the next thing you know, it's it's uh, it's good. All about the editing. It is has a lot to do with the editing, but then there are so many more bad films. Uh, then there are good films. Uh, let's welcome uh, uh, John. Uh, is it Matt Hot? Is that it, Matt Hot? Matt Hot. Matt Hot. Hi, Jay. I like Matt Hot better. What do you say? What's his name? It's M A T H O T. M A Rodney Lee Conover is here. Hello, Matt. Uh, Hi, no, no, yeah, but I like Matt Hot. All right. Well, today you can call me that. Well, I like that. <laughs> I mean, and then Susan Wright. How are you, Susan? Yes, I'm good. And, you know, I call him hot all the time. Is that your boyfriend? Well, he's my husband, actually. Ooh. <laughs> How come you're not Mrs. Matt Hot? Yeah. You um, like that? Now you're yeah. talking. <laughs> How can you change your name like Wright? I mean, come on. Susan Wright. How yeah, could you go right. wrong when your last name's Wright? That's Did right. Did you put, you, you put that in the bottom of your emails? That I like when the people have the sayings in their emails. Yeah, you know, I do. But, what you're saying? Yeah, you can say it. You can say it, Susan. <laughs> what is it? If loving me is wrong, I don't want to be right. Ooh. <laughs> and what is yours, Mister Mathot? You know, mine. I'm just a huckster at heart, so I'm afraid mine is just horrible movie night links. So it's uh. That's it. Movie night links, and um, are you two actors? Actors? Have you been actors in movies? No, uh, no. Uh, just a bit parts, maybe here and there, like as an extra in Friends films, but. Nothing, nothing great. Okay, and so you decided to show awful movies. Uh, how often do you do this? We do it monthly uh, at a theater in the in the heart of Hollywood. <laughs> mm -hmm. I mean, Which one is that? Which uh, one is it's, it? It's on. Uh, it's a place called the Complex, and um, oh, yeah. it's right along, right in kind of like Theater Row on Santa Monica Boulevard. The Complex. Mm -hmm. yeah. You know it, Rodney. I, I know where it is. Rodney knows it. Okay, so now you have chosen. Um, the worst films, and and how many folks show up? It, it seats a hundred people or so, or how many folks? It's a fifty seat theater, and uh, you, we uh, were actually this month will be our our year anniversary show uh, in uh, the theater where we're at. But we've been actually been running the show in our living room for like two and a half years before that. So we usually get about. Maybe about 35, 40 people. So we've had a couple of sellouts here and there, and then a couple of dismal turnouts here and there. But uh, generally, it's no matter who shows up, it's tons of fun. Now, you are, uh, Garrett, have you noticed how famous John Mathot is? I did. Yeah. <laughs> I don't get uh, starstruck, though. Yeah. John is a storyboard artist for The Simpsons and Futurama. Have you been with The Simpsons for, what, 13 years or whatever the time's been? Yeah, that been on, and off, on and off, actually, I've been with them 18 years. Jesus! Yeah, since season... So you're like a... You would think it'd be on by now. Yeah, you, you're you like a millionaire. <laughs> well, as some of the Susan. directors... As some of the directors say, like, well, if we were firemen, we, we'd have our pensions by now. But, I mean, when you say you're the storyboard, you're the guy that... that Sends the shit off to Korea. Draws the original idea... And and it's it, you're kind of the rough rough drawing guy. Is that exactly. it? Exactly. Like I, I will get. I'm one of the first people to get the script, and I will plan out the shots and the filmmaking, and and do my best to. So help. you're a part of the comedic element. Uh, indeed. Yeah. We 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 help direct the show. Really. Yeah. You know, one one of the reasons I married him was because he made me laugh so much. Well, he's he a, a laugh time. riot here on did this you, show. I did can tell you, you that. Right did now. you invent the part where when Barney belches his his mouth and face? Now like I that? would be a millionaire if I if I did make that up. <laughs> yeah, that's a winner. Now, have you ever met the Koreans that draw this thing? We've had. There's been a few of the artists who have come over from Korea and toured the studio in years past. And how old were they? Uh, Eleven, they, twelve. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> they're, they're zygotes, actually. And they kind of <laughs> add their pencil to wow, one up to me there, Jay. Did you hear <laughs> that? Early. Oh, my goodness. You know what, Susan? He has kind of a smart aleck kind of humor. He does. That's what you he need does. for The Simpsons. Yeah, he? it's real smart alecky, you know. Yeah. Now, now the thing about we're going to go into this horrible movie night. Don't don't worry, we have plenty of time, and and there's no one better coming on, so we're stuck with you as guests. But okay. um, the the thing the thing about the the Simpsons is, and, and what you 
uh, do, do they get it overseas? Do the Koreans get the jokes? Or do they even know they're going to be jokes? You know, that's a good question. I, as far as I know, since we, since <clears throat> on our end, we, we don't really have as much communication with them. Mm-hmm. Uh, I don't think that they, I'm, I'm sure that they will dig the physical aspects of things, like say the broad physical comedy, maybe the in-jokes they might not get, <clears throat> except for the time that you, you may remember there was an episode where, uh, they actually made light of the Korean drugs. Exactly. Right? Yeah. Exactly. And they had them, you know, with bayonets in their backs. And <laughs> yeah. I'm sure. I'm sure when they got those drawings, when they got those drawings, very, they were very proud of that episode. But you never heard anything back, or you never heard the little Japanese laughter, which we all know, is <laughs> like that. You never heard. Of course, that. like Hank, Hank Azaria does an amazing Japanese laugh. Right. He's also Mo, isn't he? He does. He is, is Mo. He Mo? Mm-hmm. Ah, there's always a line. That's my favorite character. Well, you know, you do the voiceover, and the, the reason why I know that, I don't know if you know this or not, but... Professional voiceover. I'm a professional Indeed, I've, I've comedian been, myself. I've but I work for... Have um, you ever drawn Jay Thomas? No. I have not. I have not. I've you know, I've never been on The Simpsons or Futurama. I, I do American Dad every now and again. Yeah, uh, but my point is certainly that Matt Hot here is work for other shows. Do you well. work for other shows too, Matt? He's on oh, and off. Sure. Absolutely, I've done. Hey, uh, did you do Hercules by any chance? I never did Hercules. I noticed you were on that. Um, that was the dad, American me. Dad. Uh, and I have worked on American Dad. I did a little bit of time on Family Guy. Um, I did Dilbert. Keep shuffling you around. Is, are you trouble? Am did I you do the movie Teacher's Pet? I did not work on that either. But we All have right. uh, that. You were you were in that one. I was in Teacher's Pet. It mm-hmm. was it was a nifty show. Um, the Goofy movie, um, Superman. Oh, the Goofy movie? Ouch. <laughs> you know what? That was a slam. I'm going to tell you something, Susan. <laughs> I cried at that movie. Uh, when it came out, I took my, like, at that time, he was like eight and years I old. And I quote, ouch. No. <laughs> and when Goofy finally takes him and they get on the stage together to see the rock star, I mean this, my little boy and I were together. I started crying. It was a touching moment. It was. Well, you know, good. you're as smart aleck as this asshole husband of yours. I tell you that right now. Both of you. Both well, of you. birds of a feather. Oh, I see hey, that. Hey, did you ever do a storyboard of The Simpsons and it got through and it was after the fact and the director came in and said, what the fuck are you doing? <laughs> there was one time that I, uh, <laughs> when I was a background artist, I started kind of in the, in the background department drawing just, uh-huh. the, just the backgrounds and I snuck in. It was the interior of a recording a studio, and I snuck in the name of a, of a little DJ group that I had. <laughs> and supposedly, when they were watching it later, Matt Groening stopped the tape and said, What the fuck is this? What is this? What is this? <laughs> You'd think why he would appreciate something like that. Like that? And boy, did, yeah, they, we caught hell for that one. And That's I, why you're off and on, buddy. You know, yeah. John, you're not supposed to make it so large. Yeah. Because it's supposed to and be, it's going to be quick enough to where they don't notice it. I, I thought I, the billboard was, you know, nice and subtle. I have one uh, question, and th- this is a rumor, of course, or a an <coughs> urban myth, or whatever, alleged. that some of the Disney guys drew penises and stuff, oh, and the, the little, little mermaid, mermaid tops and all that comes down. Do you believe that that that's what those drawings are? Actually, I'm, I know some of the animators who were worked on Little Mermaid, yeah. and that was. The, the the erection scene during the during the wedding on the boat was just a weird accident like Anomaly. accidental uh, 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 kind of a flowing of the of the of the fabric there but uh, every <laughs> once in a while something will get thrown but when the little mermaid's top comes down and you can see her little newbies that, that's not a mistake action. yeah it was, it was now susan that they, that they susan took. before we talk about and it har- had the dj's name on horrible it, movie night susan you're are you a uh, failed actress uh, no, actually, I'm a very successful elementary school teacher. Oh, my. You know what? Yeah. It takes back everything you I do. Said. You know what? My respect for teachers is immense. Well, thank Be- you very much. Because now my, that he's out of school. My children <laughs> have been molded by great teachers. Public school or private school? Uh, I teach public school. Even better. You're a Democrat. Uh, yeah. I am also. <laughs> and, and, of course, our children go to these... Very dangerous public schools we have in Santa Barbara, California. Awesome. <laughs> and prior to that, I want both of you to know this, that my children went to the public schools in one of the most horrific areas, 
Greenwich, Connecticut. So oh. they went to these these very multicultural. Oh, of course, just light white and kind of <laughs> off white. There, there's there's a couple of kids with incredible tans yeah. uh, at the schools. So where do you teach? What school? Um, I teach at a little school called Toland Way Elementary. It's um, a Los Angeles Unified Public School. Wow. Yeah. And do the gang moms and dads drop their kids off at school? Is that they do? That's what you I know see. what they come to the Halloween parade. That you know the the tattoo dads and the you know we have a couple of kids that have two moms and um and it's great. The two mom kids are my favorites. I was telling a story when I coached uh, little league football. You always make those kids John linebackers. <laughs> those are the roughest boys. I mean, I don't know about the girls, but the two momed boys are always tough. Tough oh, I guys. Bet. Yeah. Oh yeah, always. Now let's go to this horrible movie night dot blog spot. I don't think I'm done talking about the Simpsons. Dot com. We'll get back to the Simpsons. <laughs> so you show these horrible movies. Yep. Uh you've ranked one number one that I tried to get in badly. It was, you know, you when you're an actor and you're not working, you know, you'll do anything. I tried to I auditioned 3 times for Super Babies Baby Geniuses 2. I mean, I went to a callback and everything. Not you've now. Ra- you've ranked this the number 1 worst movie? Well, you, well you that's IMDb, it. Jay. Oh, IMDb ranks. Yeah, I was going to say yeah. that. No, that movie is even too bad for us to watch. You don't watch that movie? No. There there are some movies that are so mm. bad that they're, that they're bad. pleasant to watch. <laughs> well, but that's your thing. It's, no, no, no. They they watch movies that are so bad they're good. Right, exactly. Thank like you. what? What's what did you show last month? Pluto Nash. We we did Alien Warrior. No, no. Last month was uh. Oh, Twister's Revenge. Twister's Revenge. Yeah. Oh, never heard of it. That one. You mean it was so bad it didn't have a a box cover? If I'm correct. That's that's right. right. <laughs> no box cover. No no uh, movie poster. There was actually no evidence that this movie was ever even released. <laughs> Who was in it? Nobody was in it. <laughs> but it was made by a bunch of guys in Wisconsin, and it's about a talking monster truck. <laughs> I like it. It's it's astonishing and it's bad. It's like a uh, Night Rider, except a a monster truck, right? Yep. Exactly. Yep. There was a uh, an a, gru- a group of uh, three bumbling redneck idiots who try for the entire movie to steal the truck. Hmm. Now I see here. Santa Claus, nineteen fifty nine. I'm looking at IMDb. Mm-hmm. Um, I, you know, so I don't have a list of your hard. Do you There's have a, a list, list of what's at you, the end of the prep of a lot of his of horrible movies? What's, what's yeah. your number one? Horrible? Oh, I see them. Oh, I got them right here. Yeah. <laughs> oh, shit. Well, we can go. Uh, well, well, we actually have. we we have two that are kind of almost tied for first. Yeah, right. and our second worst one is Susan. Uh, second worst one, definitely Suburban Sasquatch. <laughs> is there is there a <laughs> Suburb- I don't is know. there an urban Sasquatch? Or is it just uh, I think so. We haven't found that movie. Uh, that yet, would though. be a good movie. No, but so, Suburban Sasquatch is a gem. Can you smoke dope while you're watching the movie, or have a cocktail? Uh, uh... you can have a cocktail, but you have to come preloaded with the uh, with the with the weed. You got a, a pre smoke. Yeah, yeah. And then yeah. You have to you, can you yell right? at the movie at you at the screen? You're allowed to yell at it. Yes, we encourage we encourage people to. Give us their best and finest riffing of the movie. It's kind of like Mystery Science Theater, except the without the mystery or the science. And our audience shows up, and they're the ones that yell out the, the quotes, and you make fun of it, and the audience will laugh along, and we give out prizes at the end for the best and funniest uh, riffs. Every one of them seems to be uh, either a murder movie, an alien movie, or a monster movie. Or Sylvester Stallone. You, you are, no, Frank Stallone. Oh, sorry. Oh, sorry. <laughs> Do you ever have a movie, a love story, or a so-called comedy? That's... Do you ever have Jennifer Aniston week? No. <laughs> We'd have to pay okay. for those movies. <laughs> oh, you only run the ones... Oh, oh. oh that's no, you right. Know, you got you got to run public really domain. Work. What? Right. What? Comedies don't really work for what? Most of the time, they're trying the movies. Trying you can't, to be funny. You can't make want. fun of a comedy. I, I right. it's really difficult. Yeah. yeah, but we have. You can't this, make fun of a movie that's supposed to be funny but isn't funny. I would have a field day. There is one, like, there is one that we want to show. We have to pay for the rights for it. So we're gonna once we uh once we start you know building our circulation and making a little bit more, we're gonna start uh, uh, soliciting the the rights from some of these rights clearing houses. But anyway, there's a movie, a Bo Derek movie called Ghosts Can't Do It. I think it's from 86. 
It's, for, and it's, it's uh, the late years between her and John Derrick. This is astonishing. <laughs> it's, it's amazing. Uh, in the movie, Bo Derrick is married to Anthony Quinn. This was unfortunately one of his last movies. God. And they live in Aspen. Well, he's, a, he's a tycoon of some sort. He has a heart attack. And his doctor tells him that he can't have sex with Bo Derrick anymore, so he shoots himself. And then spends the rest of the movie talking with Bo Derrick as a ghost. <laughs> and they never screw again. Well, their plan is, well, well, Bo is so heartbroken, she moves down to the Bahamas. Of course, so they can put her in a bikini. And then nothing. Does she have that hair still? The wacky, she did not have the hair. But the dread, the beads, whatever. The... So what their plan, what she and uh, ghost Anthony Quinn's plan is, is to uh, drown a local buff man so Anthony Quinn can inhabit his body so they can start having sex again. So that was a comedy. Kind it's of kind of comedy. ghost. It's ghost. It's ghostish, like the movie Ghost. Right? <laughs> it's ghost right? with with no emotions right. whatsoever. Right. <laughs> right. Now a horrible movie night. Dot instead blog of ten, spot. Instead of you ten, don't need the blog spot. It three. What you don't need to do blog spot? Why'd you put it on there? Go then? right to uh, horriblemovienight.com and it'll go. Okay. We also have a Facebook page and Twitter, of course. And right now it's only in uh, Los Angeles, the, the Hollywood uh -huh. area. Okay. Yep. Uh, what was? I'm gonna go over some of the movies here. Uh, we've heard of First Blood, Rambo. This is Deadly Prey. Deadly Prey is wonderful. Well, as you know, First Blood was uh, based on a novel. Now, if that novel was a coloring book. And they made a coloring book, and they made a movie out of that coloring book. That would be Deadly Prey. And it, it, Cameron Mitchell's an old dead actor. And he's the star of it. He's one and of our muses, actually. He's been in three films that we've that we've shown, and is, and and is in several several more. And he's he's if, if Cameron Mitchell's in a movie, there's a probably there's a strong chance it's going to be pretty pretty bad. I uh, the, watched a trailer for that one earlier today, mm -hmm. and it's like seven minutes long. It's kind of weird for a trailer, but. It's so, at one point. Well, the guy, the main guy, never wears pants, and he's just or a shirt, and he's just in like cutoffs the whole yeah, time. Cut off the whole time. Yeah. yeah. But I found the reason why he doesn't wear pants is because later on in the movie, he puts a grenade in the, some guy's pants and blows him up, and there's only a boot yeah. left on the ground. Now, why doesn't he wear pants if he's? Well, gonna... actually, he does. You know, later on when he <laughs> runs back home. He puts on a pair of actual pants, and the audience, when he did that, Booed. just cheered. Oh, the cheer. cheer deafening cheer when he put pants on. You know, we've had Frank Stallone up on our show, and he's a, a, a nice guy. But, I mean, he doesn't have a chance. It well, is what it is. It's right. sad. Yeah. He was in Terror in Beverly Hills. I've never even heard of it. What is that? It was a... It's, a, it's it's kind of. I love how on the poster it's the giant letters Stallone. There's a little Frank. Yeah. Frank. Frank. Stallone. Don't tell anyone. Yeah. <laughs> um, it's kind of a. Uh, it, it's it would be somewhat relevant now to the folks down in Florida, going Clearwater probably, where uh, it's a, a group of Islamic terrorists come to Beverly Hills to <laughs> kidnap the president's daughter while she's shopping on Rodeo Drive, and Frank is a is a uh, special ops uh, soldier who's retired and is now teaching karate. And, they, of course, they pull him out. Of, pull him out. Yeah. Pull him out and, and bring him in to rescue the president's Script daughter. writes itself. Yeah. Say. And Frank, you know, Frank is a prolific guy. and, and, and Did we, Frank uh, contribute any music to this? Uh, you know, I project? wish that he sang kind of a far from over theme for this, but unfortunately... <laughs> <laughs> HorribleMovieNight.com uh, uh, John Mathot, Susan Ryder here. John, uh, we're all excited because he is the storyboard artist for The Simpsons and for Futurama. Susan, of course, is a, a teacher of, of, of young gang member Americans who will lead our nation into the future. What was um, Guns of El Chupa Chupacabra? The Guns of El Chupacabra. Yes. That's a Mexican uh, uh, monster, right? The Chupacabra? Uh-huh, yeah. One space yeah. sheriff, one bloodthirsty monster, uh -huh. and one million bullets. Yeah. That about now, this was meant to be... Uh, this is a Pop Toppy deal, right? This movie was too long. <laughs> <laughs> I think five minutes would have would have pretty much done a good job, but this was actually the only movie that we showed that... We maybe regret it a little bit because it was so bad, it was painful. Uh, people were calling for Scott Shaw's death. You mean the actor? Yeah, 
Well, but isn't it the adventures of some space? What's the space sheriff's name? Uh, it was, uh, Jack B. Quick. <laughs> 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 now, when they do a space movie, Susan, uh-huh. uh, you know, millions of dollars are spent on special effects. This is a 1997 film. What were the special effects like? Uh, the monster, actually. The chupacabra. It was, the big... was, it was a big... I, it, well, I don't know. What did it look like, John? It was a big rubber suit. Uh, okay. It was actually a halfway decent monster, but it didn't really move. There were actually no special effects. The, all yeah, of the, uh, yeah. For being a space sheriff, he somehow decided to use Earth weapons with Earth bullets and, and bows and arrows. And... There, there were no spaceships or shots of space. So to speak. <laughs> How did it maybe, get? Maybe maybe he was yeah. being a sheriff on his spare time. I I don't know. <laughs> yeah. What is a a uh, a vigilante luchador? What is that? Well, the luchador is a he was. <laughs> This huh? film, this film was a revolving door of characters. Like people would show up out of nowhere and then leave. So the luchador <laughs> was a guy that was a Mexican wrestler that showed up to try to find the chupacabra, and then he was interviewed by a local reporter had sex with her, and then he was never in the movie again. Well, <laughs> wow. This one was like, baffling to us. Are most of these uh, titty flicks? <laughs> there, there is a, a, a decent amount of uh, boobs that are, uh, that are exposed in a lot of these films. Um, but, and there was a scene in the movie where a fully nude woman was sh- uh, shooting a shotgun at the chupacabra. That's and was good. it a mess down there? It was a mess everywhere. <laughs> <laughs> And finally, <laughs> that um, was the Chukacabra, I think. Microwave <laughs> Massacre. This, Jay, was our favorite worst movie of all the movies we've seen. It was <laughs> astonishing. It was from 1983. The star was Jackie Vernon, who you probably remember as like one of the. You mean the comedian? The comedian, Borch The Bell. old comic? The and voice of. Voice of Frosty the Snowman. Yeah. <laughs> I did Happy not know birthday. this. <laughs> 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 this one was was stunning. It was kind of a comedy, kind of a horror movie, kind of a slasher movie. It was about a a construction worker who's married to a shrewish wife who uh, was a gourmet cook and always cooked him fancy meals and all he wanted was a hamburger to bring in his lunchbox. So one night after after drinking after the jo- on the job, he comes home and he and he drunkenly kills his wife and eats her. Wakes up in the morning with no recollection of this, but now he realizes that he must start killing hookers to feed his desire for human flesh. So he puts them. Do they actually show the heads in the microwave? Uh, and the funny part about the microwave. <laughs> what is the setting for that? Uh, this was like a sub. It looks like it was California, like a California suburb. Yeah, just yeah. No, 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 no. What's did? the setting on the microwave for you? Oh, this oh. <laughs> <laughs> thank you. It was Blanche. <laughs> Flesh. Uh, so would they show the thing explode in the microwave? The, no. The funny thing is that the no, microwave no isn't even head. used until the end of the movie. Me. It was full of like rubbery, really fake looking appendages with bones sticking out. <laughs> and here's the, the funny thing about when we um, put this up on our Facebook page as our, uh, as our uh, most recent movie when we were about to show it, we got an email. One of the members of our Facebook group is Jackie Vernon's son. And he emailed us and said, I can't believe you're showing this movie. This movie has haunted our family for years. <laughs> our dad always thought that it was great, and we, we knew it was awful. <laughs> they had to sit through it. Oh, shit. That's they, even tried, they even tried at one point, he, he even imagined a sequel. And, um, it's, what would you call that sequel? I'm sure. <laughs> it, would be, it wouldn't be microwave. It would be like well, turkey. Microwave. <laughs> yeah, turkey-based. <laughs> well, <laughs> first of all, sort of, it's, it's politically incorrect because it's... It, it's well, no, that's correct. Microwave massacre. That's yeah. I, I was I was confusing it with man eater. You know, um, that's my favorite. At least their uh, description of it. Can you find some Jackie Vernon comedy? If I remember Jackie Vernon, his his um, delivery was he was totally deadpan and nothing went his way. Right? Yep. And he, yeah. He brought the trumpet on. Uh, he would bring the trumpet on the Tonight Show. Yes, and, and wouldn't play it, or, or just play like the last note, or something. No, he would just hold it. Yeah, yeah. but he also just talked like this. He always talked in a deadpan voice. Was that, what was his voice like in the movie? The same. It was. It, he, <laughs> well, he, there, 
he would occasionally he'd be like, I don't understand why you can't make me a hamburger. But but he would occasionally get fired up, like if he was drunk or or chopping up a, a hooker. Sounded with like an Jackie ad. Vernon. Oh Jesus, that was a good one. It would be like Stephen Wright, and we hear him have some excitement in his voice. Yeah. You know, you know, you know. I've always felt that when a comic chooses an act like that, like Stephen Wright, it's like. That's it. That's the. I mean, he's hysterical, but w- w- it's not going to be in a movie. In. It's like, well, that's yeah. not true. Look at Larry the Cable Guy. Yeah, but he has energy. Is what I mean. He oh, kind of went see. the other way. He started off as a. Uh, yeah, he's got. Oh, energy. you mean that, the deadpan thing? Yeah, yeah. You got nowhere like to go. Steve Landisberg. Yes. Yeah. Right. You always did get that do... Barney Miller gig. He did get it. that Barney. That's before comics were well known, though. Yeah, that's you know. true. Do we have any uh, Jackie Vernon? I don't believe so. No, guy, he, he's 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 long dead, right? Yeah, yeah, <laughs> right. Uh, Tom of South Carolina, yes, Tom. It's Jay Thomas. How are you? And uh, horrible movie night dot com. John and Susan here. Yes, Tom, go ahead. Well, as experts on horrible movies, you might, I'm going to describe one. Maybe you can tell me where, who. What you know what? If it's on? one that I'm in, go fuck yourself now. <laughs> I'm sorry, Susan and John, that you had to hear this. Just right now, just put the phone down and go fuck yourself in the living room. How's that? Wow. Yeah. <laughs> oh, he was going to describe what I was he in. He either hung up or he's literally fucking himself. Well, I don't know. He might have taken With my instructions. You know what, uh, John and, and Susan, I'm sorry. I'm sorry. Sorry, <laughs> sorry to hear that. Oh, yeah. okay. <laughs> and by the way, boys and girls, for those of you that have seen or heard Uncle Jay in Teacher's Pet, I'm sorry you had to hear that just now. Because <laughs> that sounded just like the angry school teacher that I played. Except with the naughty and words. And Susan, don't uh, yeah. you know? Don't yeah. pass this kind of language on. No, not no, at all. Okay. <laughs> we we, yeah. we have a question for you guys. How about your favorite bad movies? Well, minus Pluto Nash all the way. Pluto Nash. We oh. have a we have a funny Pluto Nash story. We uh, oh, we, tell me because I've got one too. Uh, but tell me. We met um, through some editor friends of ours out here in L.A. Uh, we met the. We met this. We met this guy who was an editor, older guy, and we're like, you know, what, what kind of films have you worked on? And uh, he's like, oh, I did um, Network. I'm like, Network? You're kidding me! Like, <laughs> no. oh, I did, he uh, starts naming all these great movies. Lenny, and yeah, Lenny, yeah. and uh, with you know, with Dustin Hoffman as Lenny Bruce. And then it's like, and then recently I did Pluto Nash, and it just broke my heart. <laughs> we're like, ooh, That's the same editor oh. from, from Network. Now, Pluto you guys Nash. know a lot about movies. Can you imagine? The, the the group of movies that Castle Rock has put out over the last you know twenty five thirty years from when Harry met Sally, I mean there's just a murderer's row of brilliant films to Absolutely. come out of that place and Pluto Nash single handedly brought that studio <laughs> into bankruptcy <laughs> who was in, it who was name. in that movie? Eddie Murphy Pluto Nash yeah now um, I don't know it y- you know the you know who the host of Last Comic Standing what's that fuck's name that comic. God, oh, I've, I've blocked his name. Uh, He's on that. Robinson? Nah, forget it. He used to. I'll, I'll, I'll think I only know Go ahead. I'm sorry. I don't watch this. I don't watch a contest that I would win every week. <laughs> there's a lot of uh, there's a lot of animosity towards that show in the comics community. It's kind of it's kind of funny. Did you guys see uh, best worst movie ever? We have not seen no. that. We we've seen Troll Two, which is one of our favorites. Troll uh-huh. Two is fantastic. And uh, best worst movie we have not yet seen, but we're, we very much. What well, yeah, is it? It's the documentary, like looking back at the people that were in Troll Two. Oh no, we had the dentist on. Yeah, we had the guy oh, on. Oh, we had the star on. He's fantastic, oh, by the way. And the movie was good. I mean, it wasn't a bad movie. It was a good. Hey, was Jennifer Aniston in Troll One? She was in Leprechaun. Oh, Leprechaun. That's what I'm. No, thinking. no. Best worst movie. The Messed movie up, Troll Two is terrible. Yes, yes. but the documentary. Is is really interesting because of the director and writer, whoever he is, he takes it really seriously S- till this day. He still to this like, day. thinks it's a, it's a good movie. Yeah. Oh, it's unbelievable. He yeah. gets upset because everyone's laughing at the movie. You know what though? Right, when right. you in his defense, mm-hmm. when you make a movie, right, you can't jump to that side and say it's crap. Writer, producer, <laughs> actor of Bachelor Man, ladies and gentlemen. <laughs> if, if Rodney million, Lee Conover. If a million people told me it was crap, I wouldn't believe it. You know, I'm just the opposite. I I'm just the opposite. But if it was I know called, that I'm I'm in bad movies. I know I am, and I yeah. But I you don't write and produce them. No, you're, I don't. You're in them. It's not your fault. But I have. Well, name one that you and wrote I will. and produced that was crap. You've not done that. 
Well, this last one I helped out a lot with. Which which one are we talking about? One we just watched? Snatched. Oh, that? Where the guy goes in to get a... <laughs> I thought that was with Jennifer <laughs> Aniston. Okay, <laughs> listen, this will never get released, so I'm going to give it to you. Ready? I got every friend I had together after I was sent the 150-page unshootable script. I was asked to help rewrite it. It's about a guy who goes into the hospital <laughs> to give his kidney to his brother-in-law, and when he wakes up, they've made a mistake, and he has a vagina. Oh. It's called Snatched. Oh. And I play the attorney. Um, oh, my God. And, and poor, mean the guy, You mean the guy sued? Because if I woke up with a vagina, I'd be at home all day. I wouldn't have any time. Never leave the house. <laughs> Lawyer Schmoyer, I got something to play with. <laughs> I'd go back for a breast enlargement. Well, <laughs> here's the ge- one. <laughs> here's the genius casting. Here they get they get um, Andrew McCarthy and and uh, Jonathan Silverman from you know Weekend at Bernie's. They star in the movie, and Andrew McCarthy is the guy that wakes up with the vagina. Nice. So the first day of filming, typecasting. <laughs> Knew that was coming. <laughs> <laughs> I'm sorry. First day of filming, the director, who's one of my best friends, goes, okay, look, he's playing a guy who wakes up with a vagina, and it's not going to be a good day for him the first day. You have to be in the first three days shooting with him. When I get to the set, you could see in his face, I'm playing a guy that has a vagina. <laughs> it was... Oh, it was. Ju- hey, you, hey, you, you guys. Know, what have you rough. What have you seen at the theaters lately? I know that you can't get the rights to show them. Certainly not for a while. Can I give you my worst what, movie what, before what, we move what, forward? Sure. Independence Day, I thought was so horribly awful and laughable, and and when I would say that to people, they would go, "What are you talking about?" Oh, I got another one too. Who's the one with Brad Pitt and it, from the from the Days of the Pharaoh? It's like a Greek mythology movie. Troy. Troy, Troy was oh, yeah. one of the worst pieces All of shit, stoner. but so bad it was good. The entire theater but was Independence laughing. Day to me was a laughable movie, and yet it made a billion dollars. And and I mean, you can never show that because it's too expensive. Right? Now, what is the real? Because you have more than twenty people in the room or something. What's the reason? It's but, mostly because the well, there's a uh, a rights clearinghouse that owns yeah. most of the rights to show to publicly show movies, and they are very unfortunately named Swank International. <laughs> doesn't really sound like the the right name for your business, but nonetheless, sounds like they, something on The Simpsons, doesn't it? It does. <laughs> Swing, yeah. come in and get your movie rights. <laughs> get, now, why uh, wouldn't you just run it and fuck them? Just show yeah, it. They're not going to know. No, who's going to know? We figure, you know, we we figure that, but then there's going to be that off chance that somebody like who, you know, well, you just say, you so just you never do ignorance. it again. You cease, claim ignorance. Cease and desist. We didn't yeah. know. We had no idea. Yeah. Well, come on. Since, since you played a lawyer in your movie, we're going to get you to represent us if we're there. Wrong. You go. You know, every now and again, a friend of mine will be in trouble. I go, look, I've only played a lawyer in a movie, but I'm telling you, I could defend you in this one. <laughs> So, what have you guys seen lately in theaters that you see as your one of your future horrible movies? What? what, what give me a <coughs> contemporary. Uh, you know the the stuff that that we pick like rarely has been shown in theaters, plural. Okay, well then give me a DVD. <laughs> get, get to my question somehow. Let's see. Recently, uh, we didn't care for Scott Pilgrim that much. I had high hopes for that. Yeah. You know, my 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 kid, sixteen, fifteen year old kids like it. Mm-hmm. So I'm going to be forced to watch it with them, but they 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 like that movie. So what I think happens is it's made for kids, and that's who that's how they make the what movie. What did you guys think of District Nine? I w- we were disappointed in District. 9. I thought it was so bad it was good. Yeah. I watched it last night and I laughed. There were, there were yeah there were moments that were funny, but I thought it was it, it was really supposed to be a faux yeah. documentary, and it was it ended up being funny. You'd see these the you'd see the shrimps or the prawns in the background. Mm. They'd be smelling cans of stuff and throwing it behind their back. And yeah, there was all kinds of weird ass comedic elements in it. How about when the I, part where like the the pig where, 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 where there was some kind of gun and then the pig a pig went flying by or something? That's right. You know, just out of nowhere. My yeah. kids yeah. again loved it, and when I was watching it. They weren't laughing at the stuff that was happening in the background with the prawns eating out of the trash, and I kept going. I think I think they're jo- I think there's a joke here somewhere, right? And and my kids just took it as a monster movie, 
And the write-ups were about, it was a statement about apartheid, right? right. Yeah. Uh-huh. And I'm reading these reviews and I'm going, no, this, this is bullshit. Well, not only that, if you, if you <clears throat> accept that premise, yeah. you're calling the, the dark skinned or black or Afrikaners, whatever you want to call them in South Africa, you're calling them, oh, those are the prawns. That's it's kind right. of a weird ass statement to make. No, in that district, doesn't it have a number, uh, uh, uh John and, Susan, does, isn't there a number? There is a district in in Johannesburg where the slums are of Johannesburg. Or? I think that was the genus of it. Uh, yeah, there is a district, district something or other. Yeah, so it was that is yeah. Short film, which you right. Might, I don't know if you guys have seen. So horrible so, so the movie whole, night dot com, right? The, That's it. All right. What else? Any other questions? I got one. Yeah, you got to talk about Man Eater because they ran out of money. Oh, and, meat, oh eater. meat Eater. Meat Eater, yeah, I'm sorry. And the reason it's called Meat Eater? <laughs> because they ran out of money, uh-huh. and uh, the pork board came in it with help. <laughs> so the last half of the movie, everyone's just eating pork the whole time. <laughs> yes, and, and they actually sing, um, I wish I was an Oscar Mayer wiener. Oh, in the movie. oh my God. Very- oh, wait a minute. I got a movie for you. All right. <laughs> the Adventures of Ragtime. Mm. It's... It's Shelley Long and I, and we play. And horse. Mi- wait a minute, miniature horse nappers. <laughs> no, we're full size. The horses are miniature, right? Uh huh. And so we shoot this movie, and um, we you know get our checks. Life goes on, and and the little boy from um, what, what was the Tom Cruise movie about the sports? Jerry um, Maguire. Uh, Jonathan- the little boy from Jerry Maguire, or the kid from Liar Liar, some big huge movie. He's the little boy in it. Shelley Long and I play the kidnappers, right? Um, I talk like this the whole movie. <laughs> I don't have no teeth. Well, that horse has got that. That horse, that me. horse hasn't seen the last of me. <laughs> Do we have a little? You've com- got that in there. Christina. We have it somewhere, Christina. You just got to play a little of it. You got to get this movie. So we shoot the movie, and it's awful. It's a piece of horrible shit. They don't have a stunt man, so they shoot a scene where I'm at a. Uh, of course, hadn't seen the last of me. There you go. That's me. Wow, so, that was a wow, nice. play. That horse he, he does a good impression of himself. <laughs> I he? sure do. They actually put me in the middle of a car race that was going on in Ventura and just shot the race and had me run back and forth during a real race. <laughs> wow. Hey, did you guys see a movie called Dirt Merchant with Danny Dirt? Masterson? No. No. Ah, you got to get that one, too. All right, well, I'll when I go. finally got to see, the, you know, two years later I looked at it, the horse is talking, but when we shot the movie, the horse didn't talk. Wow. Oh, no. But it doesn't talk. It's just the horse's thoughts. Weird. Yeah. Uh, You'll find that one. I, That's I, a good one. I wrote the Adventures of Ragtime. And if any of your listeners have any uh, any suggestions for their favorite bad movies, we love getting suggestions. We've, we've programmed some of the movies from uh, people sending in uh, some on our uh, via our website and facebook and uh so if you want to how do you get the movies though if someone suggests them <laughs> well that one that i just mentioned 299 at walmart yeah. at, at the in the bin there at the drugstore but i feel when you're like leaving. you would just have to randomly go to a store and see it like nah, I, if you, you, you went can get to... anything on amazon you can oh get that's a good get point amazon no, i have it right in here i'll send it to you <laughs> <I have> it. <laughs> awesome right he's got several of them now it, look at that old box of them. now wait a second now hold on you've got to show chud i was in chud i i noticed you were in chud now chud is actually cool though yeah, that's not a so bad. It's good movie. I just went to a screening of it at Notre Dame High School. They were studying it, and it was okay. But why didn't we leave? Why didn't the people leave downtown? The monsters were only in the Greenwich Village. Well, why did Arnold Schwarzenegger come back to a time when they had guns? Why didn't he go back several generations and kill Sarah Connor's great 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 grandfather who was pushing a plow? <laughs> well, then you wouldn't have a movie now, would you? Exactly. That, that's the yeah. That's the yeah. Uh... If you find The Adventures of Ragtime, I will make a personal appearance at the screening. Fantastic. Okay. But I'm going to wait in the lobby smoking a cigarette and wait to see what happens when people come out. And he's going to smell of horse dung. That's right. (laughs) Hey, listen, uh, John and Susan, thank you very much. Uh, Go to Horrible Movie Night. Or nights, is it single or plural? HorribleMovieNight.com, yep, all together. Thanks a lot. And also, when you watch The Simpsons or Futurama, 
uh, John uh, drew it all and is the genius. Look, look, look for John's uh, behind it, subliminal and crap in the background. Pictures of, of tampons floating in midair. <laughs> thank you so much. Thanks, Rodney. Thanks, Jake. Thank okay, you. Okay, thank you, Susan. Thank, thank you, John. Okay. All right, we'll be right back. Tomorrow morning, wake up with uh, me. Garrett Andrews will be there too at Howard 101. We will have uh, a player from the. Uh, is it is it a midget basketball team? What is it called, Garrett? He is not a player. He is the president and GM. How tall is he? Three foot three. And he will be in the studio with Shuley tomorrow. Ira, uh, is Ira uh, the weatherman in? He's or? just calling in. Oh, he's calling in. I yeah. see. And they actually play um, a reg- with a regular hoop and everything? Yes, on a regular basketball. Which is 10 feet? Yes. They don't the drive small cars, and they don't. I don't know what other right. example. They, they run up and down buildings. the. They run up and down the, the you know the the court. They do. Is it a professional team? Is it a? It is not. It is, it is uh amateur, I guess. And they are called the New York Towers. Of course they are. <laughs> In homage to uh, the September 11th attacks that deeply affected several members of the team. <sighs> It must be. I mean, I, I'm. I, I really hate to say this was true. There are certain things that happen to you, and I'll I'll call them afflictions. But I have to tell you that I think that if I were born with certain afflictions that I was made fun of or looked, I, I think I would off myself. I don't know that. I, I don't know if I could. No, you wouldn't. I just read the other day that people that are cross-eyed, and there's a. There's a disease, and it starts with a P. And up until six years old, they are played with with their friends and classmates. Starting at over six, they stop getting invited to birthday parties and to various, you know, things, play dates. And then as they get older, they, they are made fun of, and nobody knows who they're looking at, and, you know... The, you know, the whole deal. And, and you can't hit them in the head and straighten them out. You know that, don't you? I, I, You've tried that? I've tried it all. <laughs> yeah, nice guy. <laughs> Dad! I just thought that way. I thought it would work. You just you hit him right in hold, the... Hold still. <laughs> <laughs> okay, look that way. Look, I am. You know, uh, what do you say when the when the two eyes are going and doing... One one, one's hunting rocks and one's hunting coons. <laughs> You, you can never date them because we're always seeing someone on the side. <laughs> <Thank you. laughs> oh. But I mean, I I really might off myself. I don't I don't know what I would do. It would or, make you stronger. You wouldn't be the person that you are now. What now, now, Christine? If you were a little person, yeah, you know, um, correct terminology. If you were a little person, well, she's not going to hang herself. She'd slip right through the thing. <laughs> <laughs> it wouldn't work. And you were like with those big legs, and you know you wear pretty dresses and everything else, and and you come to work. I, I hear it all the time. They go, "Oh, Charlotte, you look so pretty today." And Hello. <laughs> Who are you, Mrs. Doubtfire? <laughs> Hello. Oh, well, hi there. Or like, or like a person who's cross-eyed comes to work, and they're all dolled up, and you go. Oh, Betsy, you look so beautiful mm. today, you know? I mean, it's just... It, Why would you want to off yourself if the only thing that ever happened to you is everywhere you go, people go, Hello! <laughs> I mean, it, you, you live a life know. of uh, O'Reilly there. Let's go to Cineincio. Is that is that your name online, too? Is C- that where you live, in Sonata? No, he's from New Orleans. Who is Cineincio? Who's, who are you? Hello? Cineincio. Hey. <laughs> you know what? It is, uh, what, 4.45 hey. in New Orleans. It's already started. I would have bet you that Cineincio. This guy started oh, early. You're right. He did. Cineincio, you drinking there in New Orleans, <laughs> are you? Not at all. Not at all here. I'm here inviting everybody to my Bible, my Bible Quran, Menorah, Star David burning party on Saturday at <laughs> He's burning a. all the books. <laughs> You are going to burn the Quran. You're going to piss everybody. The Bible. Every uh, religious article. You're burn. What, what time does it start? Yep. Nine thirty a.m. to on Saturday at your local town hall. This is in every single municipality in the United States. Now let me Everybody tell you, I religious kooks. That's what we need to do. 
I was watching CNN today. They're not spelling it with a K. They're spelling it Q-U-A-R-A-N because I, some Islamic people threatened them and said that they were spelling it wrong. They're scared that something's going to happen to them. And they're talking about uh, people blowing up the church when the guy does it on Saturday. Well, hey, that's what they should do, I think. Get rid of, get rid of some of these religious mixed nuts of all religions. Hey, but I really do here, think I'm, that I'm if the guy and... I'm going to watch the Vikings beat their um, well-oiled machine, the uh, Saints, tonight, too. You know that, right? Wait a minute. Uh-oh. You live... <laughs> Hey, yo, why? No, I came down here because you crybabies were down here five years ago on the on the TV. Where well, we need your help, we need your money. But I come down here, all I've been is fucked down here since I've been down here. Wait a minute. Right? You came down there to help, and yes, and, and it just, didn't work like, out for you. Just didn't like, work out. Just like I did after on uh, September um, 12th of 2001 when I was living in Connecticut. I went to... Um, Jacob Javits Center in New York City and volunteered for a year and a half. So, but so that, now the the volunteering in New York City satisfy you, but the volunteering in in Louisiana well, did I not satisfy. I didn't necessarily come down here to volunteer. Let's face it, everybody wants to make a little bit of money, but they don't want to get fucked by the people they're trying to help. You've been fucked by the people many in New Orleans. Times, many times, he signed with the New Orleans Police Department. When All right, they, stay where you are. When we come back, we'll hear this man who's been fucked by the great city of New Orleans. Stay where you are. A few moments ago, we had a very disgruntled, gruntled, disgruntled citizen of... Uh, is he calling back now, Garrett, on line one? Is that him? That's Cincio, whatever his name is. Went down there to help and apparently screwed by everybody, including the, the New police. Orleans Police Department. Good work, boys. <laughs> are you there, Cincio? Cincio, are you getting screwed by someone? Cincio? Cincio, yes, indeed. Yes, so Now, now you're pulling against the Saints tonight, even though you yes, live in New Orleans. Yes, Be- well, I came to, I'm transplanted from another part, of, up by you there in Connecticut. Right. I, I came to just the right, came to help the wrong people after um, Katrina. What's the wrong people? Who'd you try and help? The, all the people unappreciated scumbags that are down here that make you have you work for them and then they don't pay you. You know, not everybody down here is a scumbag, but you know a good percentage of people down here are. Now, wait a minute. What do you do? I had people work for me. Everyone got their money. What do you do that you, yeah, construction, what did you do? I do renovations, remodeling, new new building to old buildings. And people screwed you out of your money? Not some, not all. I have met a few nice people down here, but I just think the Saints are going to lose tonight, even though they're a well-oiled machine. Now, why don't you leave there? Yeah, when did the police Well, you? you know what they say about um, New Orleans? You come on vacation, leave on what? Probation? It's true. <laughs> so you're on probation now. Yes, indeed. Because of your drinking problem. Not at all. I don't drink. I hardly drink at all. I can't say that I never do. So what what, what did you get in, on, in some sort of police trouble for? Well, it was a he said, she said situation. When I first came down here, I bought myself a truck and I was scrapping, you know, through the um, streets of New Orleans. You know, there was piles and piles of stuff on the right. side of the road. I stopped by a property where I picked up a cast iron bathtub. He says that I picked it up off the street. Fuck you! You're going to jail. Wrote down my license plate number. Six months later, I have a I have a um, warrant stating that I stole this bathtub off his off his porch. Now, it was, oh, he said, he, it was a he said, she said situation. The OP, well, who is the she OP, in this? It sounds like two men. There was a girl in the bathtub, apparently. There was there a woman and, and a member of it that she said? What? I said, you said, he said, she well, said. He and said, he said, said. It's a he said, he said well, thing. Yeah. Now, where's the tub now? Where's the tub located? Where's the tub now? That was yeah. just the scrapyard as soon as I got it. What I did, oh, I went I back to the neighborhood, thanked right. the guy. He was Who outside. that? He says, uh, Who like, that? Evident, evidently, one of the uh, workers threw it out on the street. Who that? Who that? And they're jokers. Who that? And the jokers that are going to get choked by the... Uh, Who that? <laughs>